There, does find the guy planting the bomb. Hold the it into a second. 1v3 looking for the punch, looking for the last two. He's gonna find one that will get to the boss. Absolutely a must make because of the, the and ease of easy them. What? The rest of his team is slowly collapsing. The Sombra is the last one. Oh, and then Blade yes. with the clutch. Nella gonna get the Nair, starting up the Nair train. Boy cannot get out of it. What are we gonna see? The forward air, then down air. Taking some form of space outside the spawn door, but Dragon Blade is going to look to take it right back with a huge shatter. Oh my god! Monster. Another so pick! Another pick! Oh, he's going to keep going! He's going to bang! Hard point in the hand of the other team. Toxic tried to find one. Finds a second! Does he get the 30? Finishes off with the pistol! Kill. The entire team in front of him, and he's going to find four! The ace, actually! Push oh. on the corner and Gingy 
staying deep instead of going to fetch like usual. Shenandoah Esports channel, and what better way to start it off with not our typical schedule of the week. Yep. We're going to have Valorant for the first time on our Monday broadcast after a week schedule. We're just coming off of Spring Bake. We're yep. getting everybody back in the venue. We, of course, have all of our classes starting up. We're so ready to get back in the action here at Shenandoah. And, of course, Tiny Shiny, Exile here for this evening. And now I, I want to, you know, we're, we're kind of wrapping up towards yep. the end of the season. You, yep. You've had the opportunity to cast our Valorant team on the broadcast mm -hmm. before. Yeah. Give me, give me, tell me your thoughts, your feelings about well, this game today. I, this is one that they should hopefully win, right? They're feeling very confident coming into this game uh, up against Grand Valley State here. Um, some stuff that they like to do, right? They run a lot of double duelist stuff uh, going into a lot of these matchups, and they're very attack heavy as well. Their defensive yep. side is not the strong suit of the team, but when they get on that attacking side, mm -hmm. they're really able to get the ball rolling, and they play a slower game uh, on the defensive side and kind of speed it up a little bit when they yeah. get onto that attacking side, which is fun to see, so we'll see how that goes today. And of course, a lot of that just depends on the individuals, the players, and yeah. the team themselves, which once you guys get to look at their faces, you may notice that there is one unfamiliar, or rather for us, a little bit familiar, yeah. from, com coming over from the Overwatch team in your bottom right corner is going to be our good buddy, Sacred yep. End. He's coming in as the substitute for mm -hmm. Ryuk, unable to be here today. So with Ethan Sacred End coming into this lineup, the last time, he's not unfamiliar with Valorant. This yeah. isn't a new, new rodeo. I mean, it's a little bit old. Three years ago, <laughs> he was on the Valorant B team here at Shenandoah, and now he's going to be making his debut in a senior year. Yeah, I I'm excited to see what happens here because I have, personally, I have not seen Sega and play I'm Valorant in ever in my life. I've only seen him play Overwatch, and he's very, very good at Overwatch. So I. I'm excited to see what happens <laughs> here because I have no idea what to expect from him. Hey, he's good at shooting guns in one game. How hard can it be in another? Sure, I know, right? right? Yeah. 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 And hey, and playing both games with him, and he just absolutely aims diffs you every single time. Yeah. And yeah. Th this is the guy. This is the one that you're expecting to have, especially filling the shoes of Ryuk, who historically has mm -hmm. been the super high fragging duelist, where the Hornets like to lean a lot of their assets into, give him mm -hmm. that support. So, yes, he does. Go he's going to have those bigger shoes to fill. I'm keeping an eye on him for that level of performance, but also this team as a whole like they're new this semester yeah. all of them have come together for the very first time and have shown some great improvements and one of those players specifically has been ultra league coming yes. in as one of like the lower ranks in the game but has mm -hmm. made significant improvements and especially talking to the coach prior to this she yep. was so proud of every single step that he's taken in terms of aim his fragability crosshair mm -hmm. placement you name it ultra league has really become a big asset to this team yeah, it's exciting to see him kind of really step up in that regard, right? Because we are used to seeing players like Ryuk and Noble really take that front foot. But now when someone's not having a game, if Ryuk's not having a game and Noble's not having a game, Ultra Lee's been able to step up in a huge way, able to pick up huge kills and trades across the board for this SU squad. And yeah, it's, it's exciting to see kind of how this team has started to gel together and really mm -hmm. move up the ladder ranks together. Especially at two, as this is the technically the last week of our nay season, right? So mm -hmm. they still have two more games, as this one was a reschedule due to everyone being out of town with their families for spring break. So they have one today, and they're going to have their actual last game here on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Currently sitting at three and one, they're second, tied for second within their current conference, which is great for them. As these playoffs are going to start to come up soon, you're going to have the LCQ, all of these things mm -hmm. for the Varsity Plus. And the fact that this team is new, you're putting a three and one, you're competing in two two other leagues, if I'm not mistaken? I believe so. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Like, that's a ton of Valorant beds. Mm -hmm. so, like, you have so much time to grow and improve as a team, and this is them getting close to that final form, and we're really going to see all of that growth put on the stage today. Yeah, and really with Sacred End coming in as well as that substitute, this is going to be interesting to see how things kind of change up, if they do change up a little bit playing around so you can mm -hmm. end play style as well, because they're so used to having Ryuk, uh, Ryu excuse me, in that position of being yep. able to lead the way with Noble, with Clabiella as well, being able to 
change, make those calls mid-game and be able to adjust on the fly. So it's going to be really up to Noble here in Club Yellow to really take that front foot and really maneuver the team through these choke points and through these gunfights. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that improvement too has gone through their, their communications, their, their mm -hmm. teamwork, uh, with a high emphasis on the mechanics too, right? Because you're looking at uh, a lot of winning these duels, this team. They like to play individualistic. It's all about who's going to hit that shot first. And mm -hmm. you have to be able to learn how to play in a death match. What does your movement look like? How are you strafing? Are you going around these corners, peeking as a team? Like small, minuscule decisions. And those are all going to come into play. And, you know, one of the biggest factors that we are going to see is the actual map itself. Yeah. There's a different environment. There's a new way for you to approach each one. And, of course, every team has their favorites. And Shenandoah, mm -hmm. lucky for them, are going to get two out of those three favorites and it's even their like fourth favorite that is yeah. in there as well. I mean this map pool absolutely wonderful for them. Yeah, Lotus especially is a map that they really like to play on, right? They are really good and very positive coming through from that attacking side on Lotus. The defensive side, again, their struggle, but on this Lotus map, they've been able to prevail a lot of times on that defensive side as well. So this really is a map that they know like the back of their hand they and do. can really navigate uh, as a unit through these rotations and these chokeholds uh, for this map. And yeah, it's just, it's their map, right? It is, it is their map. <laughs> it <Yeah>. is. <laughs> I mean, you're coming into this with big expectations for the Hornets. This is the map where the most comfortable, they have the most experience on, and it's also the most attacker-sided map in the entire game with, yeah. I believe, a 55% win rate for mm -hmm. attackers, which is major when you're coming into this. So when teams are picking sides, not 100% sure whose map pick this was, mm -hmm. so that is going to depend where you're going to set up. Right. And it also can make things such as the defense here incredibly difficult. So it's both Shenandoah's greatest strength, but also one of their biggest struggles. Yeah, and, and moving past this Lotus map, right, we're going to look at Ascent and Bind as well if we need to go to map three. This is a best of three scenario here, but mm -hmm. Ascent's also another map that they've looked very good on attacking these sites and being able to really split the difference uh, amongst kind of where they want to attack and where they want to defend and holding that mid angle uh, on that map as well. And Bind's another one that we've seen them uh, prevail a lot on this attacking side. It's really the name of the game for them is attack well, rack up some points and some rounds on that attacking side, and then really just try to hunker down and hold that defensive angle uh, to close it out. Mm, and, you know, this team, you're having adjustments. This isn't the normal game that you're going to be used to playing. I mean, they're going to stick with most of their comfort, this double duelist, hyper aggro style, mm -hmm. yes. But you also find this lot in sacred end somewhere yeah. within the mix. And we know he has the mechanical talent. He has the aim. That's not the question here. But not playing in Team Valorant for quite some time. I mean, that very well could have its adjustment period of its own. So mm -hmm. I'm very curious to see where he's going to step in for this right. roster today. Ideally in that position of the Rays or the Jet or the Reyna. Like those are mm -hmm. the three characters primarily on. I did hear earlier he was just absolutely raving about playing Reyna. He's like, you're putting me in? Oh, I'm on Reyna. This is yeah. it. Like he was so excited about that character specifically. Are we going to see it on Lotus? Probably not, but right. there's always the possibility. Yeah, I mean, when you're comfortable with a character, right, you tend to try to lean towards that character, yeah. even if it's not really fitting for the map, right? And Sacred End being this duelist that he is in Overwatch and being able to pick up these kills, being able to play for himself, pick up these kills, regen some health and keep it rolling is something that might benefit this SU squad with him subbing in, right? Mm -hmm. Because he will be able to pick up those kills, possibly heal himself uh, with Reyna, Reyna's just abilities, right? Mm -hmm. And then just keep the ball rolling. So it'll be interesting to see if they go towards that angle. I'm going to start out with it, with the Jet Rays in terms of the double duelist. Nothing else too surprising with the Shenandoah Hornets. Especially looking in Cypher, always a great asset to have on this map, holding C site particularly. You have some incredible setups that you can have. Cerizier, or excuse me, Cerizier in particular has improved steadily when it's been locking down these sites and playing as an individual and learning how to use this utility helps stall out those attackers. And, and that's also going to be where we're going to be watching the most, right? Shenandoah are on the defense. So yeah. how are you going to split between these points? There's three of them on Lotus. That's what makes it so unique, mm -hmm. finding that balance between all three is going to be the name of the game. Yeah, I believe if I'm remembering the sites correctly, I'm pretty sure it's that C site over to the right or the left side of the map, excuse me, where uh, Cerisier 
uh, tries to set up the most, right? Mm -hmm. uh, kind of holding that angle, holding with that cam uh, by that little sand mound there, uh, and then calling for reinforcements if needed, right? And we also see Noble here on the tried and true omen pick, right? Noble mm -hmm. loves to play this omen, very confident with the mechanics on uh, this operator. And, and yeah, it, it's just a pretty standard lineup that we usually see from this SU squad. We yeah. see the jet coming through, which why uh, Ryuk also often plays, and Clabiella again on the raise. Nothing too crazy uh, coming mm -hmm. out from either side. And what we are going to notice, too, is that there is no Viper for either team. A mm. character that has pretty much cemented herself in the place of the meta, yet neither are going to opt to hold it. It was a Gecko Breach, double initiator uh, for the side of GVSU, Grand Valley State University. Actually, they're Game Changers team, which mm -hmm. is really cool. So all players um, that are female or part of the... Um, minorities of genders that we see within gaming. Yeah. So having them on the team represented here by GVSU is going to be a really cool thing to see as well. Yeah, I'm excited to see what they bring out, right? I think you mentioned already the Gecko coming through on the side of GVSU trying to get this aggression started, right? Trying to get this spike down and really kind of hunker down and try to hold these angles and force SU to have to come to them. It's going to be about these positioning and these reads. There's a lot of teams that kind of opt to poke towards A. And you'll notice that Cabiela specifically is going to hold really far up around this rubble. Just kind of daring someone to peek this out. Lotus primarily is going to be about this waiting game. Got the Tremor thrown in, followed by the Gecko Flash. It's going to manage to land on Ultraly. Flashes of their own. Repeat, that's going to hit absolutely everybody! And Clavio, Ultraly, that's three down for GVSU. What coordination to play off the Breach. Yeah, the Flash coming in huge there. Getting three members off the board uh, almost immediately here in this game. A very positive trade there coming through from SU, but now they need to make maintain possession of these sites and these angles, right? A mm -hmm. rotation might come through here from GVSU, but it looks like Sadie and Sid instead One are going to maintain oh. this push here, but yep. caught again. Clabiella taking up three in that round. Sacred End able to clean it up as well. Good start on this defensive side from SU. And they played exactly where they needed to play, right? You're holding up on that A rubble side. You're not allowing the defenders to move through this choke where they have like three different paths that they can choose from. So instead of having to guess and check, you're going to give them one option. And that's the only option that they're going to take. And at the point that GVSU, you lost three, you might as well try your best. Couldn't manage to get anywhere too far. So now you're going to approach for round number two. Bonus round, at least for the Hornets now. So we're going to end up playing a bit far back. Not even daring to peak A this time. Yeah, we see Sacred already pushing up towards that rubble angle. But like you said, GVSU are going to opt for this mid push here. The Cypher was able to set up a little bit of a trip wire there, possibly uh, able to keep them off of that site, or at least recognize when they do move on to that mid site. But instead, they're going to go through this door here, Ooh. possibly catching SU off guard. Oh, especially Noble as well. I was expecting them to push over the mound, but instead going through B around the door. So it's easier. Has to stay alive. The flash coming through. Killer smoke, though. Actually coming from the opponents. So it's easier. Doing the right thing. Backing off. Be seedy. Beginning to get a plant out. But it's Claviella flanking around from the backside towards a waterfall. Not expected. GVSU. They weren't able to. S they got the plant down at the bare minimum. It's so a matter of Shenandoah, how they want to proceed with this forward. They're still going to have a majority of their util and the better guns. And Sacred End with one, two, three. Oh, take this guy out of retirement. Put him back on the Valorant team. Why can't he just play in both? What a wonderful start for the new duelist. Yeah, the Sheriff coming out from Sacred End there. Able to pick up three on that flank angle. Coming back through that spawn area of GVSU. Able to pick up those kills and really solidify that round for SU there. And... It was coordinated, right? Everyone kind of pushed at the same time. You saw Clabiella uh, kind of push through with mm -hmm. the bot there, trying to just get some eyes on her there. And then Sacred End able to recognize that the push and the attention is on to the site and was able to pick up those kills on the backside. And they played patiently, right? And a lot of that is on series here identifying, hey, we need to back off, we need to move. And look at this, Shenandoah. They have this read on the push. GDSU are going to take another stab at the sea site, but this time with a full buy in tow. And ultimately to fall first, limited utility when it comes to these flashes. That's you with two for going down themselves. Shenandoah, they're gonna have to back off more towards this sea. You can see Sirizier 
beginning to rotate, but little do they know, Cerezier should say right where she's at, because look where GVSU are going. Yeah, GVSU getting this rotation out, a good read from the squad here, rotating over to this A site, now possibly recognized there by Cerezier, and now the rotation coming through from SU, but this access to this A site is huge for GVSU. They are going to be able to get this plant down and really play this back site towards this door and really just force SU to come to them. A great play and a great rotation there from Grand Valley. That's going to guarantee them the first push. What else are they going to be able to do with it though. Why. Shenandoah, last time, they're going to move around towards this backside. Everyone's bottled up in the tree. They know that. Cerezier caught up in these nano swarms. Swingman going through, but the spam through the smoke will mean the end of Slim. Sacred goes in, peeks onto three. But now Shenandoah, they know exactly That's where they are. Right. Cerezier going for the reset, but they all know where the spike is planted. GVSU leading the first round win. Yeah, a good hold there from GVSU. Shenandoah trying to force their way back onto that A site, trying to get that spike to at least halfway on the defuse, but Cerisier unable to do so. Sacred as well as Noble trying to contest that door, that site there, trying to give Cerisier that space to get that defuse off, but dropping mm -hmm. very quickly. And that's the first round pickup there for GVSU, yeah. able to pick up some econ of their own and possibly, I believe, get full buys across the board for both squads. It was rather unfortunate timing, too, just in terms of the rotates. So Lotus is so dangerous having three different objectives where your opponents can go through and you invest so heavily into one, then the others that you leave open. Sometimes you move too soon. At least this time, Noble and Cerezier will be hanging out towards the C objective. So he'll be locking, working around anyone daring to rotate through the spawn. While well, the rest of the teams are going to start investigating. Noble have the blind at the ready. Should anyone move on forward? Did the wingman to scot it out? The camera is broken. Shenandoah, now the targets have been identified. GVSU, though, they're still hanging around. They're going to make the decision seemingly to start to back off. But look, Sadie got exactly what she was waiting for. Both duelists lurking around A. And she's going to get the punish. Yes, yeah, Sadie playing the patient game there, holding that angle, knowing that this pressure on C is going to force the rotate out of SU. And now GVSU rotating back towards this eighth site. The read Beautiful. again, they have the numbers advantage. They know that Sadisier is still on that C site. The two rotating up. Oh, Sadie, Sadie again picking up a third, a possible fourth. Shadows if they can get Noble as well, not quite yet. Going to opt to teleport out and play for time with the spike already planted. This is a rough one, too, especially when you're looking at individual ranks, Grand Valley States. I mean, they lean heavily on their captain in Sadie, being that one diamond player, kind of helping lead the charge. And you can see that the Horn is just going to opt to go for a save round instead. And it's going to be very important in terms of that economy. You're holding on to your rifles. You can have this greater threat as you're walking into the next round, especially coming off where your eco is going to be a lesser position, losing the previous game. So at least having these two rifles, giving them to the duelists, it's going to be a much better setup moving forwards. Yeah, passing these rifles off, like you said, to these duelists is going to be huge on the side of SU. Losing those last two rounds here in a row now means the Econ is now swaying back over towards GVSU's side of things here. Going to be able to get a full buy as well on the side of GVSU. Possibly not the case on the side of SU. We can't see buys just yet. We do see, we yeah, it will be a guardian there for Clabiella. Unable to get these full buys on the side of SU. GVSU playing strong attack right now. Yeah, they've been working really well past these first two rounds and a lot of it has been their positioning. Instead of five stacking on one site, they've either left a player to lurk or managed to split, draw attention, focus away from that. And now they're starting to pressure A. Neither Noble or Cerezier opting to play kind of up towards choke. And this is where things start to get risky because now your opponents can choose to push through tree, you can push through main, even the omen can teleport behind you. Almost three easier. They're in a bit of trouble. The blind certainly slowing them down a bit, at least in terms of the tree push the area. Relatively free for now. Don't, well, just doing a quick double check, making sure that nobody managed to slip on through the cracks in the door. Or Shenandoah still opting on the react. And you can tell, so now that you're up past this door, GVSU have the opportunity to go towards the B site. We haven't gotten to see it just yet. And it's dangerous with the amount of mollies that can be thrown inside this area. It'll be Toria. Planting first. Spike, planted. Spike now down. This point in particular, very difficult to come back onto. 
yeah, this B site is going to be taken over here by GVSU. Ooh. Slim going to rotate out, but Claviel able to pick up the kill. Flash coming through as well from Ultra Lee, trying to catch people off guard, pushing into this site. Smokes down. Now full force coming through. Claviella able to pick hey. up one with the rocket, one that she often does not hit. Able to hit one that time. She just time. called her out like that. <laughs> Come on, man. Hey, she, she told us about it, right? Able to pick up <laughs> one as well. A good retake there from SU. The the Diffuse coming through from Noble as well, able to regain some momentum back in their favor. I mean, this guy's just falling, clawing out <laughs> Fabiola for just whiffing the alt. But hey, you know what? The stories can change. Exactly. Abby managed to nail it this time. You could certainly see the smile on her face after that one. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Soon you'll be known for hitting every single exactly. alt, but a little bit too soon to change that just yet. <sighs> That's actually the fight that Shenandoah needed. <gasps> We got the bears. I didn't even know this was a thing. You didn't know the... Oh, I didn't know the bears existed. We, our observers, do a great job. They, they do. know where all of the bears are with the little lotus hats. I don't know what's going on in the middle there, so we're just going <laughs> to hope that's <laughs> oh not no. some kind of <laughs> ritual of some sort. But <laughs> hey, they're having fun nonetheless. That, that looks like they're having so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. Well, I mean, hopefully Shenandoah is too. Because they're about to be rushed here. On to Sieben, playing slow rather far, but hey, you know what? You take the fight to them! Gabriela Sacred and cleaning house on this the objective of the four players going down. That spike now guaranteed around the mound. Sid, last one standing. Is she going to try to go for the doors? Ultimately ready for this peek on through. Oh, not quite. Sid going to grab one. She can already check the corner. Nope, that'll be another Shenandoah win. Yeah, Clabiella picking up three there. Good aggression coming through from the SU squad. I love that swing out onto that mound. Beautiful. They know that this push is coming onto this C site and opt to contest it instead of letting GVSU come to them. A huge uh, rotate, not rotate, just the aggressive play coming through from SU, able to pick up those early kills, leaving Sid <laughs> all by their lonesome. And we have a little bear doing a little suntan. Off the bears. Yeah. Off of the bears. I wonder how many bears are on this map. Can we get like a tally going? So there was three standing, one with a lotus, and one laying down. So that's <laughs> five with that one. That makes that makes six bears so far. We six have bears. Six. We're at six bears counter. All right, all right. We'll have to we'll have to see if we can get an overlay for that next time. <laughs> the bear counter. How that's many? That's the most we find? important thing you could possibly have. Yeah. Who who cares about the score, right? We need to know how many bears. We, we need to know how many bears. bears. I know, right? But it does appear we are in a current timeout. So, yeah. I mean, teams obviously going back to reevaluate. I mean, Shenandoah, what else do you need to look at? I mean, what we just saw on yeah. that previous round. You're taking that initiative. You're playing aggressive mm -hmm. on the defense, which, I mean, defense, like, it's in the name. You're going to play defensive, surely. Right. But no, absolutely not. I mean, Shenandoah, when they take the fight to GVSU, not only do you mm -hmm. have the element of surprise, but taking this initiation, there's fewer places for your opponents to filter out to. They're guaranteeing knowledge, this map info, that is so valuable in the long run of this game. Yeah, coming out of timeout now here, seeing uh, what things change up, right? We see two hovering towards this B side on the side of SU defense. And on the side of GVSU, we see a little bit more of a, of a split approach trying to get this intel. Clabby Ella possibly just flash again, Beautiful. able to pick up two. Huge trade for SU. Ultra Lee and Clabiella have been a duel to mess with. I mean, my goodness, the second time that we've seen that from Ultra Lee, that was all five members of GVSU lit up. And now Clabiella, I mean, all you can do is hold back. If you, Realistically, it's a 3v5 right now. GVSU just going to chill in the spawns, look for a way in. Slim investigating, just going over on C, looking for the bait, but Shenandoah having none of it. Yeah, SU not opting to play aggressive, waiting for GVSU to come back into them, kind of rotating over to this A site. It is GVSU trying to get this access to this back of site. Smoke's coming out uh, on that long angle there for GVSU, trying to sneak their way in towards this rubble uh, area of this map. But right now, SU can just sit back and wait for GVSU to come to them. They don't have to play aggressive. They have this numbers, van numbers advantage. They know where GVSU is trying to yep. move on the map. And now it's just be patient. I've got the idea. GVSU, they're committed. Shots now being traded. Nobody quite to take any major hits, though. Once these smokes go down, that's where you want to go in. But advantage of the Gecko Thrash, yes, very powerful ultimate. What really is going to do? Sacred End. 
It's been already identified, pushed out. 13 seconds on the clock. It's going to be a bum rush over to be an attempted plant. Toria sending the wingman out. All hopes go, little guy. Plant the spike. It's going to manage to start doing so, but Clabiella sitting on that little pitch of high ground. There'll be another round going the way as Shenandoah. Beautiful reads across the board. Yeah, SU just playing slow and steady Valorant there. They know that GVSU has to come to one of these three points, right? One Surely. of these sites. So they just sat waited and just when they rotated to one of these sites like they did on B in those last 10 seconds, they just collapsed. They waited for them to have to find this angle and we have another bear. I think that makes seven. Is that a bear? I <gasps> think so. It's a bear. Oh, he has a little water tube. All right, is it water How slide? Awesome. Like waiting to go down the water yeah, slide? Yeah, I guess. How would you get up there though? Like there's no, like, the worst thing about water slides is the fact that you don't have to climb up stairs to get to them. Hey, there's no stairs, we'll take that. Sacred end, uh-oh, look out to your left. You got an omen over there. Oh, it's Sadie. He's incredibly aggressive with these teleports if you can keep an eye on their positioning. Blind going in, it's gonna go wide of Clabiella and Sadie just gonna go ahead, dip on out, got her one, she's done. Yeah, that one kill is huge on the side of GVSU. Sacred has been able to pick up huge kills in some of these rounds now. The rotation coming through back over to the C site, Sierra. Uh, trying to maintain this site all by themselves in this cam will recognize that GVSU is pushing heavily into the C site and rotation Ooh. is now coming through from SU. And now you gotta start moving though. Suzier, so managed to trade one out at least for the troubles, but that's point. You gotta go ahead, back off, wait for the duelist coming in. With that additional support, Clabiella though, she's getting aggressive, that smoke almost too late. GVSU, they still haven't managed to plant the spike. They're waiting for Cruzier to go ahead and peek what she did. It ended up being towards her own demise. Flash that up once more. It is GVSU coming on top of round number seven. Yeah, a good round and a good push there coming through from GVSU, finding that early pick onto Sacred, onto that A site, and then immediately rotating over to C, pulling the members to rotate towards this A site, and then that immediate rotation coming through, able to really brute force their way into that C site. Cerisier trying to do all that they can to stop the push from coming through, but with five members strong up against, I think it was two at the time, there's not a whole lot you can do other than surrender possession of that site. No, and this is the point where, uh-oh, things are getting aggressive. Just the party thrown out early, but that one goes wide. And hey, it's not Clabiella's this time. We can let that rest. <laughs> Get this blade storm from Sacred End. That is a site to be reckoned with. So he's opting to play a little bit more passive with it. Doesn't have the Jash. Ended up using it incredibly early here. Hunting for that first elimination. So Jet certainly less mobile. And GVSU completely rotated through that tree. I try to Pokemon out. Not gonna do the job quite yet. Or watching that corner. Notice where Toria is starting to be positioned. No one's really opting to make a move. I mean, you can notice how Shenandoah is slowly starting to work their way around. Realistically, they're just giving more time for GVSU to set up. They love to play in this tree. They're once again four stacking in as only the Rays playing on site right in front of Abby, but she doesn't quite know it just yet. About to find out shortly. It'll be Slim climbing the elimination. Noble on the trade on the off. It's Grazier roping around from behind. That's three. That's four for the Sentinel. So Grazier, absolutely beautiful. I love the patience coming through from Sacred there as well, holding Woo! those knives, patience. holding that threat of the knives on that back site there, allowing for Sudicier to find that flank <laughs> at that door. <laughs> and you can see the communication, they're nodding at each other. They know that they're that approving. play was beautifully was set up by the SU squad. They're picking up four as mm -hmm. well. You can see the growth from these players, right? That's not something that we saw earlier on uh, in the season, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> just great communication, great thought-out play, and we have elephants, too. Even better. We're going to get the whole dang zoo in here. Why not? Now we've got an eye patch, even cooler. I like it. You like the eye patch? Yeah, I think the eye patch is cool. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he still got the up. Fun fact, when I was talking to uh, Clabiella before this match, uh, she was talking about how Noble has been watching a bit of VCT, which is the Valorant Pro scene, and wants mm -hmm. to play the up because our good buddy Tens has been doing Omen Operator. He's like, you know what? I can be tens. And so far, he's gotten two with the up, yet to fall it down. There's no way the GVSU try to peek it. You know that Noble is sitting there and waiting. It's got to be a double flash going on out. Takes the shot anyways. Whoo! That was close. Noble unable to pick that one up. That <laughs> one run, 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 just run, 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 run. missing as well. Trying to retreat now is Noble. 
getting knocked up there, but able to escape for the meantime. The operator still safe, but C control. The C site is now in control of GVSU. Rotation is now coming through from SU, but look at Sacred again on this flank. If he's able to pick up this kill onto Breach here, that'll be huge. We'll be able to pick oh, up one. A possible second. Yes, Sacred. Possibly flank. three. Holy moly, Ooh. Sacred. What are you doing? He's mad that he didn't get to use the Blade Storm last round. He's like, fine, I'll just do it with my gun. I can't shoot you with my knives. I'm taking the glory here today. I mean, Shenandoah, their ability to retake these sites has been very impressive yeah. as of late, especially with their patience and allowing each other to get these eliminations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the flanks, two rounds in a row now. Cerisier yeah. uh, on the one end and now Sacred on the other. The patience to retake these sites is something that we I love to see from this SU squad, right? They're not playing too fast. They're not panicking. That is a really big flower. That is so cool. <laughs> I love it. Look at, uh, they're all like worshiping it. That's so neat. Is it a big flower or are they tiny bears? Now that's a good question. I, I would say that they're tiny bears. Bears. Tiny bears? Yeah. We're all with tiny bears? Yeah, I think tiny How bears. How much I put us at? 10? We got 10 bears? I think that's around 10, 10 bears. That's yeah. a lot of bears. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we like bears. We like parties. It was, it was like <laughs> a bear party around the flower. I know. You know who else likes to bring the party? They got Rays and an ultimate and one that Clabiella is ready to absolutely just dominate with. We're, gonna, we're, we're killing four with it. I'm calling it. Four? Four, four yeah. with the ult? Four. Four with the party. Four with the party. Oh, okay. Well, it can still be four. It can still Ultra be four. already got one. That was that flanker, Sadie, really likes to try to hold down these off angles, which when it works, yes, yeah. it works out, and it's great. But now, GVSU down one, and they're incredibly split right now. Yeah, retreating now to pick up the spike is GVSU, leaving it in their spawn. Now going to opt to rotate over to the C site. Chadissier, again, in position to have that camera at the ready. We'll recognize the push coming through, the rotation not coming through from yeah. GVSU just yet. Able to pick up one onto you. Ult coming out as well. Able to recognize that the push is strong on this C side. Now the rotation coming through from SU. The yep. flank again, Sacred and Toria able to pick up the kill. However, trying to even things out for GVSU. Gonna do that. It'll be the lockdown into play though. Abby still finds her mark. Clabiella two for two thus far with her ultimate. Significant improvement. And big thing, it got the lockdown out of the equation. It's a 2v2 now, Sacred. On another flank as Toria. You know where the third is, it's on the box. It's Ben King. Can he get it? Yes, he can. Whether it's on the Widowmaker or the Jets, you can expect this guy to perform. Yeah, I, I, I love the patience again coming in from Sacred End, right? I mean, we see him coming on these flanks time and time again, waiting for info to be gathered and waiting for the Last right moment to the strike head. and really reveal their position and swing out onto that box that Raze was sitting on there on the side of GVSU. Noble as well able to pick up, uh, well, I don't, did Noble pick up a killer? I think he might have. I'm not sure. I think, I think Sega got both of them. Yeah, yeah Sega, Sega got, got both, both of them on the flank. They're behind the box, then on top of the box. That's right. Mm -hmm, he was able to mm -hmm. pick up both kills there. But so far, this defensive side is outshining <laughs> the positive attack <laughs> that we often see from both of these squads. Yeah. I mean, Shenandoah have been dang near flawless here on their attack. And I mean, now being the final round of their defense, talking about their strengths earlier, I mean, this is exactly where you want this team to be. It's the bait on out, Sacred End. You knew there was three there. A gutsy move. Well, that will certainly be punished. But hey, might as well pull out all of the stops. It'll be Aftershock. Pushing Kaibiola back. Timing now guaranteed the smokes. She doesn't really have any of these major sight lines to work with. And Noble still hasn't to move around. Senses the KJ. Moving around B, slightly outnumbered. Both these players relatively even, but nobody yet to make the plants. Noble still taking this 1v1 closer to the spawn, which is rather at a disadvantage. Shenandoah, they don't have access to smokes of their own. Noble finally throwing one in. And hopefully they'll buy some more space. Moving around this back site, because you know where exactly where they like to play. It's around Tree, but Sid couldn't meet him there. Yeah, Clabiella now with the operator trying to get kills of their own, now swapping back over to this Vandal. That huge pickup there now makes it a 3v3 situation. Both uh, teams kind of hovering around this door angle. We can see the Omen Sadie <gasps> on the flank. It would pick TV. up one Slim as Genius. well. Clabiella going down all up to Cerisier, but unable to get the kills uh, for the side of SU. GVSU, good push, Switching good rotations, side. and really a flawless round there uh, from the side of Grand Valley. 
Yeah, Grand Valley ending themselves on a good note, finishing their attack phase with an 8-4. to four. But even better for Shenandoah, you have to argue. Like, we're seeing a lot of these highlights from GVSU. They've, it's been Sadie. She's been the main one to show up for this team, kind of be that leader aggressively on this omen, playing almost as a duelist instead of that controller position. So... When Shenandoah, they're starting to recognize these patterns. They're figuring out where she's located. That's just one of the times that it's a situation they're unfamiliar with, caught them off guard. But now Shenandoah, it'll be their turn to make the decision. Which direction are they going to take? Which one of these sites? Haven't seen them on attack. It's been hyped up so much. Oh my gosh, yeah. my expectations are through the roof. Yeah, I'm very excited to see what they do with this attack side here for the side of SU. We see this often from the squad, the split two, hovering towards C2, hovering towards A. So you see are also trying to get some intel onto this B site, trying to scout out information. Now going to pick up the spike is Clabiella, now rotating in the intel gathered by the Cypher, recognizing no one is covering this B site just yet. Now the rotation is coming through from SU. GVSU, however, still holding these angles on this A site and on this C site. We now see Sadie positioning over towards this B site, trying to recognize the push coming through. The plant now fast wow. from SU, trying to get stuff moving fast. Sid able to get one onto Sacred Sadie, dropping as well, though Noble dropping to you. Trades across the board. Ooh, and GVSU, the retake was quite spectacular, right? They didn't mm -hmm. drop a single member on this retake. Clavio is still alive so far, trying to save the day for Shenandoah. Unable to do so, you with the three piece in the mm -hmm. opening round of SU's attack. And that was, that was big for Shenandoah, is they, they got the scouting out, they realized, okay, they're four stacked on A. All right, let's try another site. Problem is, it's so easy to get from A to B that even as fast as they were with that setup, GVSU, they sprinted around the back, they had the high ground, you're able to move through connector, and suddenly it was a full contest in pistol rounds, as chaotic as they may be. That was an opportunity for GVSU to come on back. Now 8-5 to five in the counter, having the bonus round. Shenandoah can have to get a little bit creative coming up. Yeah, SU kind of hovering towards this A hard push here on the side of SU. We see Noble trying to get Intel onto this C site, but GVSU recognizes it. They're aware of this potential A site push rotating through four members still holding strong around this rubble position for GVSU trying to maintain Ooh. possession. Slim able to drop Ultra Lee there, an early pickup for the side of GVSU, possibly forcing SU out of this A push. Uh, they s yeah, they're gonna go ahead and back that one off. The hard part is too, especially if you're playing into a Killjoy, her U-tail is an absolute nightmare yep. to deal with, especially when you have these lower shield rounds that like, even the smallest of tip damage can be a problem. And now they're going to go towards C. You're going to hear the comms go through pretty soon and see these players start to book it. There it is, GVSU. Identify the push going in. Shendo, I'm going to have to make quick work. Dash in. Sacred in. Now on the site. Everyone else kind of grouped up towards Waterfall. Sacred in scouting it out, identifying... Will be a retreat. Sid, opting to play back more towards her teammates. Smoke instead. Was it easier? Guarantees the plant. Now Shenandoah, they need to get the setup. But once again, it's Sid getting Noble off of the side. They're down one. They're down two. Toria playing wonderfully off on the flank and. Wow, I mean, what wonderful ways for them to clutch up GVSU, winning the ones and even a two for the yeah. side of the gecko. Yeah, and you can see SU is getting this early access to these sites and getting this plant down fast. But GVSU is able to rotate and almost catch SU off guard before they're able to set up their defensive angles onto mm -hmm. the spike and really just overtake them and overpower them, winning these gunfights left and right. We saw Toria there picking up two on the gecko on that back side. And this is something that SU possibly might want to play a little bit slower or at least get to those angles faster. Mm -hmm. Once this plant is going down, we don't really need to hover around this spike, spread out, try to hold those angles and be ready for these flank opportunities that GVSU has been able to find so far. And GVSU too, they're no longer four stacking on one objective. They're doing the one, two, two approach. With a lot of their presence being on B. Getting the sound indicator, Sid in a risky spot be the aftershock. Help zoning them, but he was playing so far aggressive. A free pick now. Shenandoah Hornets, they're going to take it. They move far, far away from the B site, knowing that all the players have regrouped. They're going to try to make a quick work rotation over to this A round. 
before GVSU could catch on with what's happening. Sadie in a good position still, possibly able to pick Ooh. up a kill. Clabiella, however, will read it, recognize that Sadie is possibly lurking around, able to pick up that kill. 5v3 now in favor of SU. GVSU now rotating back over Ultralee, will be able to find Slim as well. Trying to regain access is Sid, able to pick up two Ultralee wow. and Sadisier will drop. But again, Clabiella on this flank, the nade coming through as well. Sid needs wow. to move out, will be able to do so. Four kill Ooh. for the side of Sid, but Clabiella will wrap it up in the meantime, winning the round for SU. You say the route that Clabiella took to get There's behind him saved Shenandoah the round. I mean, we're seeing Sid come alive yeah. here, particularly on this defense. I mean, KJ, that's where she is going to shine the best, of course. But with Clabiella taking an off angle, Shenandoah's strategy of just bum rushing it down mid as a five stack, yes, mm -hmm. that will work fast. You can get all of your players to a point, but what are you going to do for this retake, right? Identifying where GFC you may be pushing from Clabiella, helping to clear that out, and then therefore coming up with three of her own. It's had a great match thus far. And I'm trying to do the same thing, replicating it on B. The alarm bot will be there, so notification to come shortly, especially with the majority of GVSU being on A. You have to filter through it's a little util to look at. Yeah, pushing through fast onto this B site, but not opting to plant will rotate again through. Sid able to pick up one sacred, will answer back. Clabiella will fall on the side of SU, one duelist down. But the rotate, they're opting not nice. to go for this B site. I love to see that from SU, rotating fast through to that C site, getting that plant down and really holding these angles uh, faster than GVSU might uh, anticipate coming through here. Sacred End only on 70 HP, but has a very strong angle breach, trying to disrupt, make something happen. But the rotate still coming through from GVSU. My big concern here is Sadie playing around the mound on the flank. That's something that Shenandoah are ready for, especially with the electrifying performance this player has had. This trade on either side. The flank coming through, though. The dangerous rotation we talked about. The Wingman is on the few. Sacred End has to move quickly. Can he manage to stop it in time? No! Little Buddy gets the job done, and Sacred End falls regardless. Uh, Sacred there had a four piece, but that little guy, that little He'd love gecko. the little guy, except for when he does that. Uh, yeah, that is true. <laughs> he's very cute when he's on our team, right? But great play coming through from GVSU. Oh, they're having a little wedding. Or a date. I don't know. Probably a date. <laughs> You see the flowers, I'm like, oh yeah, they're yeah. on a date. Yeah, the, the, I mean, look, we've we got a pink date. He's, he's getting the flowers to his girlfriend or boyfriend. Who knows? I can see it. I can see it. Yeah. How are you? We got the bear counter going. We're on 12 now. 12 for the bears! Woohoo! That, uh, that we've that we've that we've, that we've yeah. recognized. Yeah. I mean, we have been a little distracted from some <laughs> of those, but like most of them. Okay, this time though, Blade Storm activated. Well, Sacred didn't actually be able to shoot a knife. That's what I want to know. Yeah. Last time he didn't have his moment to shine. I mean, jet knives so dangerous just because they don't move with the movement seed. You don't have any of this adjustment to make, but oh, he might not even get a shot. And Camille has already taken down two over on the B site. But GVSU, I mean, they're still sticking around this A, particularly the Rays. Slimmy over in that tree area, which Grazier seems to be wanting to clear. Oh, the door opened. The can of worms. That's one. That's two. Trade evened out. Plant coming on in. Clabiella, now here is your time to shine. Are you going to get one? No, it goes wide. The perfect streak shall end. A tragedy. Two and three Ooh. now with the rocket. Sacred, however, able to answer back with the knives on to Sid. Still holding this angle. Knows that Sadie is still in the area. Clabiella now pushing up on to this omen. Will fall, nice. but ultra there to follow up on the kill there. Good aggression, good Same patience time. coming through from the side of SU. You can tell that they're starting oh God, to no get more you. confident against this team. Like, even that push that Sarizia ended up taking, right, is that normally, and in most of those situations, you'd want to play back, kind of allow Sadie to walk into you because there's so many angles that you could be hiding at and you're at an advantage, but Sarizia just felt confident in winning that one. She got aggressive and managed to get the elimination. So small things like this, you're noticing that Shenandoah, when they're up, when they're feeling good, this is how they start to play, and it looks so dang good. That table is way taller than those bears, by the way. That table was not <laughs> matching up at all. <laughs> I 
love that's what you take notice to. I, I love the bears. Bears are adorable. And a standard approach from SU as well. Love to see it as well. The 2-1-2 two, two coming through from the attack on the side of SU. But GVSU trying to answer back, trying to get aggressive in this mid area, pushing towards Ooh. this Mount Clabiella. Able to answer back with one Sadie. Noble finding two Sadie wow. and you dropping. Now the rotation, the call coming through from SU to rotate back over to this A site. They know that no one is there and that they will have plenty of time to set up these angles. Yeah. I mean, it traded out more than it should have, arguably. I mean, this is a full save round for GVSU. But since they down two, you now have access to two rifles. So these players very much on even footing with the exception of one war standing for the Hornets. They'll have an opportunity to set up their post plant. These players still barely entering toward this A objective. And you can tell. I mean, Sid, Slim, neither. Yeah taking these incredible risks and does have the lockdown in hand should GVSU want to use it and looks like she's going to go ahead and pull it out so Shenandoah we're going to have to forfeit that positioning into tree we're going to have a couple seconds to move and now this is good because you know exactly where Shenandoah are not and can therefore pinpoint most of them are in back sight yeah a good use of that killjoy SU force out of the angles that they were trying to Ooh. hold sacred however will find the early pick on to Slim. Now it's all Angles. up to the Killjoy Sid. Sidi Sierra able to pick up the kill, but <laughs> will go down to the bomb. Not the too worried about that one. Rough. Able to pick up that, that kill on to Sid there. But yeah, SU being forced out of that position didn't worry too much. They just regained, reheld some new angles, and were able to pick up the kills to secure that round. As the patient play that we want to see is we don't we don't like it when players they, they get selfish right and they're like hey yeah. my kill my kill my kill no mm -hmm. you're playing as a team you're playing for a common objective here and the fact that they're moving in these separate areas like you kept sacred towards the top of back site where we saw Clabiella moving towards a main mm -hmm. here stayed in the middle of the site and there was only so much that one raise could realistically yeah. accomplish so they're securing their win conditions when they know that they have it they're not allowing themselves to get too overconfident in situations that they are up and it's leading them to this point you're now 11 and 7 you next round you're on match point it's going to mm -hmm. force GDSU into full on survival mode and you can really tell their economy is fully struggling here yeah su able to fool by everything that they want to have right we might see the op come through from noble or from sacred here again not as likely as they like to play very aggressive here yeah. uh, on the attack on the attack side. yeah but with this stack up they're looking to stack hard shoving towards this c site only uh sid will be in the area to try to defend this one. Four members hovering over towards this A, B site side of the map. And here's the thing, they know that Sid has been the only player on this point. I can't think of another setup time where it's been w more than just the KJ. On the objective in Shenandoah, they're going to play that to their full advantage. Sacred and dashing through the Nano Swarm. No fear whatsoever. Now on the site. That's something they expect. No, they don't expect to jump on through Duelist, clearing the objective, turning all the heads. Crazy are noble to take them down. Sadie, though, moving on the flank, doesn't seem to clutch. Cavioa! And she won't be able to do so at all. Shen and Doa now up five players standing. They're on the borderline of a flawless right here. Just that Claviella, as well as Sacred. Get them out. That's one. Is that going to be a second? No. The Rays shall fall. Hornets looking pretty clean, though. They're going to pull out the Rocket Storm. All right, Slim. Grabbing two. Slim trying to make something happen. Will now rotate back over towards this B site, trying to force their way in possibly, but will oh, instead save? opt to save. We'll use the ultimate, but then go to yeah. save instead. Will not opt to try to contest this C site. Will now try to regain control over this map, trying to really save Econ and have a fighting yeah. chance here on match point. And what Shenandoah did so well is because they took the fight fast, or they took the site Match fast, point. rather, they had the plant, and there was so little time for GVSU to figure out what was happening. But by the time they got their heads turned in the right direction, they finally got some eliminations, and it was down to one. Even if you managed to clear the site, you weren't getting a defuse whatsoever. And you know what? Exil, it's your lucky day. They combined your two favorite things. Elephant and a bear. I love it. <laughs> How cool is that, right? Yeah. Are they holding something? I think they have like a little jar. Is that jar. a rose? I think it's a rose. Is, it a is rose? that a rose? I don't know what I'm seeing. Pot? What is that? I think it's like a little pot. A flower pot? Yeah, they got a little pot probably. Yeah. Nice. Got some cookies in there. 
<laughs> hey, maybe Shenandoah. They if they close this round now, they might get some cookies too. Yeah, maybe. maybe cookies. Maybe. I want a cookie. Do we get cookies for being casters? Yeah, I, I think we'll have to so. ask. We, we can we'll, we'll probably make, a, make an argument for cookies, right? Oh yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll we'll sign a petition. Be like, hey, we need cookies in order to function for broadcast. Exactly. I agree. <laughs> I agree. One hundred percent. As you should. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. One more round here. Shenandoah A site seems to be the direction they shall go. Ultimates galore on their side. There's no IGL. Pull them through. Will be Slim playing around this rubble. Managing to grab two. Very much needed. You needed the extra info. Series here's ultimate. Revealing the locations. Now players on the fast rotate seem to commit to A. I mean, Cerezi are already through a tree. There really isn't a way out now. But Sadie holding on to this outlaw. How much health is Cerezi realistically have here? Not a ton, but thankfully the shot shall go wide. And Noble takes the elimination sacred end to follow it up. It is a 1v3 clutch scenario where UA is going to have to come up big. Yeah, Yoi needs to try to find this Rolling angle. Thunder. Will come out the ultimate use flash now coming through from the breach as well. But in a 3v1 situation, it's going to have to be huge from the breach. The angle is already being held from the side uh, of SU spots. using all of the utility, but not able to catch anyone out just yet. Oh, not quite, but it's a double peek. You're moving in Attackers to your win. own death. They'll be Shenandoah closing out Lotus. And you have to say, while they hit a couple of road bumps specifically on that attacking side, they were able to pull it together. I mean, that defense was some of the best that we saw, even if they haven't been as confident. That was like, oh, if we're on defense, we may start to go down a bit. I mean, we're bringing it back on the attack, but you're bringing the same aspects of you are, of this aggression, denying yep. space from your opponents to your own defense, mm -hmm. that it works out so plentifully before GVSU can start to figure out your patterns. Yeah. And they're able to pull ahead in such a way that you're looking at an incredible return on the attacker side. One of the most attackers favored maps mm -hmm. in the game. Said it so many times today in Shenandoah. We're clear to pull away with game one. Yeah, and all members on the side of SU had a very strong showing uh, in this map one as well. And I Absolutely. love to see Sacred End. He did not lose his touch at all Absolutely. on the Valorant side. Able to pick up huge kills, uh, a few quadras here and there, I believe, <laughs> in this map as well. Yeah, just toss him in there. So why, why not? not? Why not? Exactly. And, and yeah, it's just good to see this type of aggression and the momentum on both sides, on the defending and the attacking side coming through from this SU squad. And, you know, it's something that we really hope to continue seeing from them, right, is mm -hmm. when you're moving into your next map. And now, of course, they like Bind. It's, it's pretty fun. It's pretty cool. But you got to stick to the game. The OG map of them all, right? And Shenandoah, they like to play this double duelist, especially with how well Sacred mm -hmm. has been playing. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more because not only is he a good aim player, mm -hmm. but his ability to think ahead at a game. Like, he's playing yeah. 5D chess out mm -hmm. there. We just we don't even see it. We see him standing still around a corner, like, listening for them. But we genuinely just don't know that. Like, he's yeah. thinking so far ahead for this team. And mm -hmm. having him here has been... in something that's fit in perfectly. That was our question for today, and the fact that they're continuing that has been great so far. And lucky for us, our journey isn't over just yet. So we still have our next game two to come on up, which will be on Ascent. But before we get there, we are going to head to a quick break. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a few minutes.
We've been here before We're both so broke That's something that'll keep us afloat Don't work too slow We can't keep falling deeper again Came too close And it tastes so far from pure I rush up blood But we search for so much more We've all been here before And welcome back to our Shenandoah Valorant series. I mean, this team has had an incredible start to their day so far. Up 1-0 on a Lotus map that yep. they looked relatively dominant on. Even the games or the rounds that they did lose, mm -hmm. 
they weren't like blaring red flags in your face. Ooh, right. that went wrong. That shouldn't happen. Even like the small mistakes, like they realized what they were, mm -hmm. managed to compensate for them, and here they are. They closed out the round in a 13 to 8 score line and are now ready to go into their second map on game point. But before we talk a little bit more about Ascent, I want to go back to these players, the individuals, what we saw on that map specifically, and what they're going to bring into Ascent for now, right? Specifically, yeah. We talked about Sacred End on the Duelist. Filling the shoes of mm -hmm. Ryuk. Awesome. Great. Keep it up. Clapula, two out of three raise rockets. You know what? We are getting there. But everybody else as well. I mean, Noble was always playing with one of the Duelists, never on like their big solo missions. And mm -hmm. hey, he even got his op moment. He had his yeah. tens moment. I mean, look at that. Yeah, I mean, everyone on the squad played very, very well here in that Lotus map, right? Of course, there were a few hiccups dropping uh, a few rounds here, uh, but they were able to adjust very mm -hmm. confidently and strongly uh, off of the things that went wrong. They tried a lot of different looks on the defensive and on the attacking side. Claviella <laughs> definitely just saw something very exciting. I don't know what it possibly could have been, but... I mean, she looks absolutely <laughs> shocked the, the right now. She sees oh something, goodness. but everyone's picking up from behind. I mean, look <laughs> at them. They're already they're like, hey, what's going on? What's, what's the captain so excited about? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's always so cool, like when you're sitting so close to each other as well. You can yeah. turn and like, "Hey, friend, good job." I'm mean, like, you I high know. five each other, and then you can like give them the stink eye if they did something yeah. kind of weird. Yeah. But hopefully, we don't see that on this hopefully next not. map. Yep. I mean, it's it, it's it's like the textbook. It's the king's row. Of, yeah. I'm gonna use Overwatch because that's my brain guard. The of king's course. row of Valorant, the OG ascent yep. to start us out. And that's this like, one set yeah. meta, we know it's gonna be played. It's like the Summoner's Rift of League of Legends, even though there's only one map gonna, that I, you can play yeah, on. Yeah. Is there anything that's not the Summoner's Rift, though? Yeah, there is. There's is a, there? Yeah, there's Howling Abyss. It's just like one bridge that you can play on. One that's bridge? It. Yeah. Oh. That's the only different. Yeah. Oh. That's yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty fun. But now we go into Ascent here, something that a lot of teams are very familiar with, one of the older maps here in the game, and MG. one that both squads here are going to be very comfortable playing on. Mm -hmm. It's the most simplistic map, I guess you could say. I mean, you have your general standard. You got point A, you got point B, and then you got your long open mid. And this is where Jet is queen for mm -hmm. all of our duelist friends. But the thing is, though, Jet isn't necessarily a must pick, at least what we're seeing on the side of GBSU. But we'll get to that in a little bit. So typically your composition, though, it's your Omen, Sova, Jet, KJ, and KO. And the big thing you're going to see here, where is your second duelist? Well, there isn't one. You only, so the Shenandoah now moving out of that traditional style where yep. you have these duelists, you have these big fraggers, and it allows you to play more aggressive, but instead it'll be Clabiella moving to the Sova, a very information-based mm -hmm. character. Yeah, and this is the trust, right, that this SU squad is putting into Sacred End here. Had a great map one, very confident in his uh, gun skills, his aim on point uh, on that Lotus map, and really, they're just giving him all the tools, right? They're going to let Sacred play this game however he wants to play it and really put all their eggs in one basket and be like, Sacred, this is your time to shine. Carry us through this Ascent map. We're going to do everything in our power to support you. And we got to see him on game one of Lotus. I mean, the Jet, certainly impressive and uh, expecting big things from you, Sacred yep. End, yep. as we get moving into game number two. I think the interesting, though, is even if we're not running double loaded, double, excuse me, double duelist on the side of Shenandoah, GDSU is going to do it with the Rays and the Phoenix, who has slowly been making a return to Valorant competitive mm -hmm. play for his survivability and his ability to cut off angles with that wall. So yeah. they're going to look ahead and try to move in that traditional route on the defensive side, mind you. So Senadoa mm -hmm. do get that attacking start that they so wished, but this one is going to be much more based off of this team coordination. Yeah, on this Ascent map, it's definitely more team-based and team-oriented when you come uh, into this attacking side, right? As well as on this defensive side, there's a lot of maneuverability through this mid Woo! area for the two yeah. teams. And already, we can see trades coming through for GVSU. And here's the hard part with this map in particular. Both of the points that you push, it's very rare that you're going to see all five players filter down one way unless it's a pistol round. And Shenandoah, mm -hmm. they got a taste of that early on because the defenders have the ability to hold up on this back part of A in heaven. And it's such a height advantage and there's mm -hmm. like 50 different angles you need to clear. It's not going to happen. Move yourselves towards the middle. 
And that's going to be a much more favorable spot to work, especially when Slim is going to keep an eye on this initial A portion, which doesn't seem that Shenandoah wants to move away from their A dreams just yet. They wanted to bait GVSU kind of out, waiting long enough, hoping for them to rotate, but a glimpse caught from Slim. You see these players start to go on the move. It's a grenade thrown out. Seconds left. But no sudden spots. Running out of time. 25 seconds and counting down. And actually it's going to be Noble carrying the spike over to B. Yeah, Noble going on the solo rotate. Going to still keep pressure onto this A site with Cerisier and Ultrally trying to pull the attention Last to Killjoy. Oh, you can see will too. move Ten over, but both left. of them will oh, go no down. Time. It's going to be up to Noble, but like you said, no time. Five seconds remaining. <gasps> Maybe. Maybe be able to get the spike Ooh, down. That's going to be close. Ooh, it's going to be a tenth no. of seconds. No, can't do it. Hey, you know what? Hey, you got to try at some point or another. It was a risky play. Shouldn't do a sacrificing two for the dreams of another. Yep, those dreams shall end in a nightmare. This round will be lost. GDSU now able to buy for their second round or at least half by for their bonus and you know when Shenandoah they go on through a difficult point to try to push for round one mm -hmm. I want to see more of a mid split I wanted them to see take that more more of that control of this space and not letting GVSU move around them as much as they did mm -hmm. before yeah and when you have the Sova on your side it's okay to play slow because you can get so much information with these Sova darts able to get uh, some recon uh, for your squad here. We can see Sacred already playing aggressive, going in through mid here, and, and the rotate over towards this A site. Toria, oh, Sadie, Toria yeah. finding right two, ultimately able to find one in response, but GVSU answering very that well to that standing. rotation. Is your thing, Shenandoah, they made improvements, right? You are just full on bum rushing your way down mid. You're hoping for the best. You have the dash, but that drone, that Sova drone that ended up going through. Sadie saved the day for GVC. You scouted all five players on out, and you set up Toria and, as well, of course, Sadie on those opposite ends. Shenandoah are just essentially watching through a car wash of bullets. Yeah. Not a great place to be for any mm -hmm. sort of agent, and, you know, that's going to be up to. It's the bonus round. Shenandoah now on their first buy. And lucky you, the bears still coming. There's a bear. There's a b yep. I, there is a bear. There's a bear. There is a bear on the shelf. I don't know where that was, but it's a lonely bear. I know. The bear needs lonely. friends. we will find friends once he gets down to the shelf. I don't know how how well he can climb, but uh, he got up there somehow. So maybe he did. Fun. Yeah, the bear did get up there somehow. Oh, oh look at them pushing all the way through B. Ultimately on the lurk. That's one. That's two. Can he get a third? Yes, he can. Woo! We talked about the improvement of this guy with his mechanics, his aim, his crosshair placement, all of that picture perfect for Shenandoah and now there's just you don't screw this up you move in now you know there's three down there's nobody left on B but they're all filtered in the air like surely they must be in this location and that's why you want to have these players start to clear out mid Fabiella is one with her eyes on it so far but she's giving GVSU time to rotate towards heaven also that was huge Woo! coming from you we see Sigurd now holding this angle onto heaven able to spot out Toria UA as well, unable to pick up the kill, but the rotation is coming through from the side <laughs> of SU. We hear the screams from Claviella as she goes down That's to Toria, ace. but Ultrally Woo! with the ace on the KO. Holy moly, wow. that was awesome. I mean, first it was a scream of terror from Claviella, then a scream <laughs> of support, a scream of pride for her teammates. Ultrally, what a performance. He's the only one with Elims on the entire team. <laughs> Seven, two, and oh, everyone. He has a hard percent <laughs> kill rate right now. <laughs> that is awesome. I love that coming out from Ultra League Ultimate wow. ready as well. Now SU, we see them posturing over towards this B push. Sacred still looking towards this mid, trying to get this early pick onto this Phoenix. Possibly the dart coming out from Silver won't spot anyone now. Slowly moving through this garage area here is SU. That'll be the turret, but this is where that shutdown will come on through. The KO ultimate, the pulse is scaring these players off. Toria rather useless without any of her util to tell them where the players are located. Shenandoah now full control in to B. The retake here, though. Planted. Rather simple. GVSU can either choose to move down lane up through markets over through this back street where we're currently seeing Sadie positioned now. The knife to scout them out. Nobody was watching out onto market. Claviella was playing far up, and this is what Shenandoah, they wanted to deny that initial space. You're down a couple, it's easier just to bypass these narrow chokeways. Sacred end though, once again, 
the blind, the boom bot, so much thrown away. Shenandoah has started off so well. Now it's only two pushed into backside. Can they make it happen? Slim, overly aggressive. The Nano Force gonna put them back. Just UA playing towards the main boathouse area. They're gonna be much that they can do to teleport onto the boxes. You'll see that bomb starting to tick on down. That'll be Shenandoah even up the score. Yeah, uh, GVSU having a good approach to that retake, but Noble able to find that early kill, the nade, not able to pick up the kill onto Noble in that instance on that backside area on B. A and really, props to SU able to hold that one down. It looked scary there for a moment with members falling on the side of SU, but they were able to keep it calm, keep it cool, and be able to regain, get their aim back on track and able to solidify that round, tying it up now at two. And that was great from Shed and Doa. The fact that you were able to get Ultra Lee's ult up so early, and then you have the quick peek. They were ready for it. Sid was like, all right, I got this. Uh-oh, there's five players. I'm dead. Sorry, team. Got to run. And GVSU, almost all of them, with the exception of Toria, started to move in the direction of the A-Site, but Shenandoah did what they needed to do. They're taking control of mid. The tree now there. They're slowly choking them back, but Slim the Bucky down to main. He'll be trade That's out. And just the KJ remaining. The last lurker, Toria. Only a frenzy in hand is going to try to look to pick up planted. the extra rifle, unless it's already gone. Club will I guess never had one in the first place. Sheriff, gotta be better than nothing. Location revealed. What can this player manage to do? Yeah, Toria now moving through heaven here. Smoke's already down from Noble, holding this angle spike planted as well. They know that Toria might be hovering over this heaven site. We see the drone coming through as well. Will not make it to heaven. Smoke coming through again, however. Turret will come down. Toria trying to hit Ooh. the shots, will be unable to do so. Clabiella with the Vandal, able to clean up that round. That's three in a row now for mm -hmm. SU. Yeah, talk about a change of momentum for the Hornets. And you know what that turning point was? It was the ace for Bolt, yeah. Julie. I'm, we're yeah. not getting over that. That better be in the replay <laughs> package. I want to see that on Twitter. I want to see it on X. I want to see it on Instagram. Yeah. All over the place. Ultra League deserves a ton of credit. But also the rest of the players now getting involved. Like, all right, hey, we mm -hmm. can't let him have all of the fun. And Shenandoah evening that up. They're taking more approaching angles. Even if they push A, you're sending typically both of, well, I say both your duelists. Ahead. It'll be both Sacred End and Clabiella down the main. Yeah, going now through mid here, trying to get some info on the locations of GVSU, still hovering around Ooh, Sacred, able to pick up the timing. kill onto Sid, had the smoke up, uh, smokes, excuse me, the flash up and available uh, for Phoenix there, but unable to get it out. Like you said, the timing just unfortunate there for Sid. Now the push coming through from SU back onto this A site. As soon as you start to zoom in, Sacred End is going to opt to play help. No, spots the players up ahead. It's actually a dink, but since it went through the board, it's not enough to get the elimination. Just opting to spray through the floor, GVSU. They were down there hurting, and both of the players are locked up in heaven. They haven't managed to clear where Sacred End is located. Even if both of them are there, who's going to expect Noble to have teleported on top? Nobody checks that angle whatsoever. How easy going to attempt to go hunting? Victoria not expecting the teleport to go through the smoke up in their face. Pushing out essentially into a death sentence. You have the rifle here, making the wise decision to go ahead and save. Yeah, Toria will go save indeed, trying to save that Vandal, trying to keep some momentum, some playmaking opportunity available for the side of GVSU. And again, that's four rounds now. SU's attack has been firing on all cylinders and all members have been very influential in these rounds, being able to pick up kills, find information, and really scramble uh, GVSU, uh, confusing them with what they're doing. Now GVSU, you lost four rounds in a row. That's where exactly where they're going to call the timeouts yeah. and a wise decision by them as well. And actually, hey, it gives us time to talk more about what we have yet to come. Because GVSU, they've been sitting so low in terms of these eliminations and mm -hmm. uh, unable to take space, rather, in terms of these ultimate points. They're just getting them online, these larger abilities that you're going to have to work with and potentially absolutely destroy the next push that Shenandoah yep. have themselves.
Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what this Killjoy ultimate will do, if they will use it to try to retake or possibly just deny entry instead into one of these sites, forcing SU to have to rotate over towards this B, over towards this A site. Uh, and yeah, with these ultimates available, there's a lot of playmaking ability on the side of GVSU. We have the Omen ult up and available, able to TP wherever they so please, right? So the flank now could be a potential angle here for GVSU to try to get things back on track. But SU so far have just been winning gunfights left and right. GVSU is unable to secure the kills, and SU right now is rolling in money. Especially that. I mean, there's been very few rounds as of recent. I mean, you've lost four rounds in a row. If you're GVSU, you're, you're forced into these half by. And in those situations, if you're not getting trades, the chances of having a rifle continue to get slimmer. And realistically, even if you have these lower level weapons, committing these ultimates, I mean, that's a big decision you want to make. And ideally, it just sets up Shenandoah even better with the amount of money that they're holding on to. They could fall, everyone could just go down immediately and you're fine for yeah. the next round or so. And I mean, you have these ultimates, you have the Hunter's Fury. If you want to give Noble the opportunity to go for a killer Frank, he can opt to do that as well. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there's no need for it. Shenandoah know that they have the upper hand. You've been keeping track of your opponent's money. Heck, you can see it yourselves. And I'll be able to move with that accordingly. But a rare, slow start is what they're going to be opting for. Yeah, SU opting to slow things down a little bit, trying to get some intel. Uh, a 2-2-1 two, two, split here, two towards mid, two towards his A site. Now a rotation possibly coming through from the SU side. Slim throwing the nade out on this A site, trying to get a kill. We'll be Ooh. able to get one sacred. The duelist is now down on the side of SU, but the rotation coming through now. Playing slow, left. not doing a whole lot just yet. We'll have sacred go down, but... The scouting now coming through from Clabiella trying to regain some info to really start this push to come through. But again, a rotate back over to B. They're playing mind games right now. I mean, but you're out of time is the other thing. I mean, you can try to book it. Victoria's going to try to trade out as many as they possibly can. The smoke is certainly going to help block it for that small turnaround. Is that going to leave them enough time to plant? The spike was initiated, but I believe that's too little too late. Grizzier, try as she may down to a millisecond, denying that overall Shenandoah a very, very rare moment where they just sit around for too long, yeah. waiting for an opportunity to come to them, but it wasn't given. Yeah, just like you said it, right? They just played it so slow. That's something that we don't often see from this attacking side for SU. They usually play so fast, so aggressive, and don't slow down the momentum. But now GVSU able to get some buys now, able to really even out this playing field. Toria not mm -hmm. with a full shield, but still with the Vandal in hand. Now GVSU can try to find their way back and regain some footing in this map. And here's the big thing, too, is the adjustment for GVSU. We can see the change in play style. What can they do against the play storm? That's three that go wide. Oh, no, no, no. Sacred end behind you. No! Tragedy strikes. Yet to get a kill. The broadcast curse. Anytime this guy's on camera, we never get to see the true accolades of Sacred End. Thankfully, you have your INGL Claviella to bail you out. This is where Shenandoah are starting to realize here. All right, GVSU, they're no longer going to push into us. That's the change they made after the timeout. Is they're, mm -hmm. they're making Shenandoah move into them where they're predictable in the defense. They can do whatever the heck that they want to do. Noble had the read on it, but just gave him a haircut. Instead, UA holding down and hell eventually caught out on themselves. Plant initiating. This is where things get scary. You are holding that Hunter's Fury in order to destroy the lockdown. And it's just in that moment, it's gonna come up big, but at what cost? You're down the KJ. He's Abby in a 1v2 and she's gonna manage to clutch it out. Clapiella, whether it's the duelist or the Sova, she can shine anywhere. I mean, on the side of GVS, you just lined it up perfectly, shooting in a straight line. Clapiella able to pick up two heads back to back. And really, with that Hunter's Fury able to knock out uh, that Killjoy ult, really was able to solidify that round almost, right? Because they were able to stay in the position. They mm -hmm. had to hold that angle and get those kills onto GVSU right now. Here. And now Econ again back in favor heavily right of SU. I mean, we can see, I believe that was Ultra Lee sitting on 8K. Yeah. I mean, even Claviella as well. So much money in the bank, whereas GVSU forced again into another save round. Sheriffs, though, have proven to be deadly in the past. 
So you know they're going to attack on B, and that's why you never want to underestimate them. Sadie in particular has been a thorn in their side. SU just a little bit faster, closing the door of the drone to scout out anybody rotating through that defender's spawn. No mind scouted. They have opted, you know, they must be market. You're going to hear the drawer get destroyed. But also keep an eye on the direction you came from. Instead, through the attacker spawn is where you're going to find both of your duelists. Yeah, no one really looking towards that area just yet on the side of SU. Sacred able to pick up one onto oh. Sid. <laughs> UA trying to find a sneaky one onto Clabby Ella, but red to perfection. Three kills over, only one falling on the side of SU, regaining that momentum. 6-3 now in favor of SU on this attacking side. You had to try something there, and GVSU, they, they just couldn't find the answer. You have the lesser guns. You're not expecting to win that round. They just wanted to make Shenandoah hurt as much as possible. Mm -hmm. but now they're starting to get a little bit closer here, and this is where things start to change. You have the Ray's ultimate, Hunter's Fury. You're going to have the comeback. I mean, Shenandoah, I want to see something. The lockdown in particular, you have the post plant of a lifetime. It's just a matter of getting to those sites and... They're going to have options of which one they decide to go to because every single player currently rushing over the tiles onto the planet. I mean, UA, going to get another haircut, Sacred End. Apparently giving them out for free today. Dash on in, but the flash, wonderful timing. I, I mean, that's just Sadie going on a tear there, right? Able to answer in response for the side of GVSU3 falling on the side of SU. The push looks so strong coming out from them, but just unable to win these gunfights. Getting a little bit overzealous, a little bit too aggressive on their attacking side here, trying to find these angles now, trying to re-enter the site through this door angle here. Sid is in position to be able to respond if needed. Noble trying to find the angles, but with 45 seconds left, a 2v3 situation not looking good for SU. They're gonna have, uh, oh, I was going to say they're going to have lockdown. Uh, you, you, you don't have that. You have Noble in a 1v3. Three. Mostly full util though. Has smokes. I mean, oh, be the curveball. All right, you know where the players are. Can you get the kills? Not quite. The crosshair just a little bit out of place. That's GVSU getting their first round in a hot minute. Yeah, and that's great, right, for GVSU on Absolutely. their side of things. Able to now buy these vandals, but again, it's the smaller armor, the lesser of the armors here on Sadie. Not able to really fool by across the board, whereas on the side of SU, they are still sitting very comfortably with around 5K apiece. Ultrally, the only one sitting at triple digits here. Everyone in that four digit range. But again, SU opting to now split up, possibly play a slow round yet again, two towards this B site. Noble trying to look through mid, trying to get this cross angle pick three, hovering towards this A site, towards this long angle here, trying to just get some information and rotate later on in the round. Cool. Okay, that was terrifying. That was a jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> if I was that even closer to that scream, I actually might have screamed, <laughs> genuinely. Oh boy. Thank you, Vic. He's finding all the good angles today. Shout out to observers. Easier though. Ah, you just can't get it locked down in place. Which is rather unfortunate, but Noble lurking around the B side. And he's the one with Spike, as a matter of fact. Which is quite interesting that you're going to leave that player on their own, especially on a B site where we've seen GVSU want to push up first. A risky play, though, is going to return in a hefty reward. More players looking to enter on to B. The Nano Swarm's force out lane is clear. It's just a matter of pulling that trigger. They know there's somebody up in market. The door is broken, yet Slim's health taking a severe beating. Now put the rockets out. The plant is going through, yes. But now the tables have it turned, or rather, they're now even for both teams. Slim getting aggressive. Ooh. Now Noble able to find that kill. UA finding the kill under Ultra Lee as well. Noble finding Again. for a possible ace here for Noble. 60 get it. health remaining. They have the spike down. They just have to play time. UA hiding behind those boxes. Noble again. Clabiella now finding this flank angle. Noble possibly going to peek Ooh. this angle. Not just yet. Being patient. Oh. Shooting through the wall. Unable to get the kill. But now we see UA again in a per perfect position here. Clabiella with the Electro Bolts able to get them down to 24 oh, HP. The Diffuse still spray. coming spray. through. There you go. Clabiella able to seal the deal there for SU. UA trying to stick that Diffuse but unable to do so. Good push coming through from the Shenandoah Hornets.
Yeah, Noble put in a ton of work there in that past round, especially clearing that space and nice clean shock dart go. lineups. To go Thanks. ahead and close it out. Now on the final round of Shenandoah's attack. One more opportunity. I want to see the lockdown go into play. I'm a KJ wait, one trick. I'm a little biased to this, <laughs> but it's such a fun ultimate for yep. your team. Thanks. The other team absolutely despises it. You get stuck in there. You can't move. You can't shoot your gun. You just see the opponents in your face. They wave high, and then you, you go bye-bye. Yeah. That's as simple as it is. Yeah, it, it is not a fun ultimate to get stuck in because no. you can't shoot for a really long time, and you're super slow. <laughs> and that's very scary <laughs> when you see five people running at you, and you're trying to run away, but you're just stuck. Yeah, it be like that sometimes. The choice of KJ mates, highly yeah. recommend. Yeah. Nobody else really to slow anyone down though. Yeah. Sova, you can you can shoot darts at people. That's pretty fun. That is true. You blow them up. You see archer. the lineups. Yeah. Getting uh, shades of average Jonas in here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, that could be Abby. I'm particularly more flexible player, even if she's been on the duelist. Sova, one of the more challenging agents to pull out, and mm -hmm. she's been rather exceptional in the work she's put in thus far. Shenandoah going again for an A push, but they're scouted out. That was UA attempting to teleport on behind them, but strictly an info gathering. Now GVSU, yes, they're gonna know where they are. It's the blind on in, the grenades to follow it up. Clabiella incredibly low. Gets slim, the only one to appear in the kill feed. 35 seconds now remaining. Surely we can get a lockdown in here today. The plants looking to come through, yet it's sacred end. That's caught out. This risky teleport onto A. You always have your second option. Get your omen over to the B site. It's the KJ playing on the back end. The teleport. Yes, it's going to go through. Yeah, Toria reads it. The spike is all B. left and alone. You can Ten sprint as left. fast as you would like, Caviella, but you're not getting My anywhere so fast. It's going to be in five to seven finish here for Shenandoah's attacking phase. Yeah, and, and that kill joint not coming through from Sterze is interesting, right? Because you would expect Sterze, excuse me, Serizier. Serizier. You got there this. There we go. Woo! I got Third there. Third time's the charm. Time's the charm. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, that lockdown not coming through is a little bit baffling, right? Because that could have right opened here. up that site for this SU squad, but opting not to use it. And now with the round, the side swap, not available anymore. Mm -hmm. It's no longer it's no longer an option. You're completely resetting your economy, despite the uh, incredible start that Shenandoah had to bolster the money to buy these guns, these incredible weapons, your abilities. It's it's, it's all gone. It's, it's it's just disappeared. It's a very sad thing. And now we're back into these pistol rounds where Shenandoah are gonna have to split up. Typical for the KJ to be towards B, whereas Ultrally, along with Sacred, I'm gonna go for this quick push on up. But the knife going out, that's going to catch one, two, three, four players of GVSU. You can see how quickly Caviella and Noble are absolutely booking it over to A. Yeah, the A hold now trying to come through from SU, pulling back now. Ultrally going to throw out some utility of their own. Sacred Ooh. able to pick up one on two Sid, possibly right. Ultrally able to find one as well. But Slim and UA able to answer back. UA now with wow. two. It's a 2v3 now Spike on the side of SU Noble, able to answer one back on to Sadie. Last but again, the here. trades are coming back through Toria, able to find the kill on to Noble there. And now it's all up to Serize to try to find the Spike final planted. three kills. Yeah, so it is here right now. Defensive, much more favorable for a killjoy, but without any utility or any clue of where your opponents may be. Putting yourself into a risky situation. The turret just is scouted out. You know, no one is on directly on site or towards back. Or actually, you know that's where they are now. Must be sitting down lower into hell. Looks for the opposite side, though. We'll end up going down. What we're learning, though, shouldn't know. They're not pistol round players. They like the yeah. big, heavy guns yeah. to play. You bring out the tiny ones, and eh, no, we, we like the big ones. Yeah, we like the ones that shoot far. Yes. And do damage <laughs> even when they are far away, right? Which pistols don't usually do No, they don't do have that. good range. They don't have good range yeah. at all. Uh -uh. Set up again. Still kind of standard coming here through SU. Oh, my God. There's a little puppy. <laughs> <laughs> Between the dog, the, pu the 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 puppy, the elephant, the bear, you you really just seem like you should you should start a zoo or something. Oh with all of your man, Valorant animals. how cool would that be? A Valorant zoo? Yeah, to have like a zoo, like own a zoo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I can see it. I mean, things would get crazy, but I mean, while we're talking about that, uh, Shenandoah just had the fastest round that. Um, 
we ever expected. We thought we could talk about zoos a lot yeah. longer. Um, yeah. we, 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 we ran out of time like five seconds ago. Yeah, yeah. It, so oh, it would geez. seem as you wiped off the face <laughs> of the earth there. Yeah, a little distracted on the zoos there, but I mean, GVSU able to answer back with two rounds on this attacking side, tied up at seven now, Econ heavily in favor GVSU here yeah. being able to get some good buys across the board here Vandals and Phantoms however still in the pockets here of SU yeah I mean, it, it was it was a bonus round for GVSU I mean yeah. you expected them to win that as quickly as they did absolutely not and I hope Shenandoah can maintain a positive mindset they ended their first half up on the day now with this all even, you're essentially resetting that scoreline. And I got those big heavy guns to play with. This is where we are happy. We can one tap people. And that's Sacred End's favorite thing to do until he happens to him as well. Sid finding to their Oof. Sacred End and ultimately falling to the Phoenix. Now rotate coming through from the side of GVSU, rotating over towards this A site. We see Killjoy still hovering over this B site just in case it's a fake rotation. but does not look likely all four members on the side of GVSU rotating over to this A site. The plant coming down as well. Now the retake needs to come through from SU and they need to play it very slow, very calmly because it is a 3v4 scenario. It's both shock darts in the club Yella. You know you're not going to hide around the boxes. You're a little bit safer there. This turret's going to be difficult. Most of the players sitting around A main area. It's crazier currently has her back turned to. Smoke going down is a nice part of having Noble on his feet. And it's Clabiella in the kill feed. Now you know both players are down main. You want to block the spam. You're going to save your teammates. Is Noble to get the food? Toria has to be sometime today, but she's not going to do it. She didn't think that they were going to stick, but Noble says, uh-uh, I ain't moving. Yeah, you can see Clabiella in that instance standing in the way of Noble there. Will go down, able to soak up a lot of that damage that would have gone through onto that omen. And again, just not wavering in the Body face block. of the possible uh, <laughs> spray there. Just holding, sticking. That defu was able to get momentum back into SU's favor now. That is a huge swing uh, for the side of mm -hmm. SU. However, full Keep buys coming through from the side That's of GVSU. Not a whole lot lost in that round on the side Placing of Grand Valley. It was a great retake, though. And again, I presented the question of after getting absolutely blown up in approximately three seconds, how do you recover mentally? Yeah. And it, it did not affect them whatsoever. They're playing the exact same game, and they're continuing to move forward positively. You did lose a lot of your team, though, so you just don't have the same amount of weapons to work with. You're saving your guns. The best thing is a marshal, and yeah, losing Noble like that is a bit rough. You're not going to have any smokes, much presence on this point, and that gives GVSU all of the creativity they want in terms of these sight lines, and now we're in a bit of deja vu. Yeah, 5v2 now situation on the side of SU. The Last run it back standing. already used here. Phoenix Ultimate coming down to get that info that started that push there for GVSU. Now it's all up to Clabiella having a little fun in the smoke, sitting there up there in heaven, doing a little dance, having a little bit of fun, but possibly not able to really get uh -oh. aggressive here. Just the pistol to their name, not Standing looking ahead. good. Well, Abby can try to get creative all that she wants, yet it is said moving up through the glass says, all right, let's end this here and now. GVSU will be tying up that score once again. And it's one of those moments where GVSU moved really fast through that mid lane. And we saw them especially playing on that upper alley on those tiles where Shenandoah, they didn't really have a dedicated person. They had one watching tree, but after they went down, it was just a full send on the other side. And the attackers, they had that plant down. Shenandoah, nowhere near enough room to attack. But now, with an even amount of rifles on either side, this is where the game starts to get tricky. Yeah, and on the side of SU, this is a round that you have to win. You have <gasps> oh. to get these kills. Noble oh. Toria finding two. Noble and yeah. Sacred End already down for the count. The Econ not in their favor. There needs to be a big play from Clabiola Ultrally and Serge to try to solidify win this round for SU. Because if not, they will not be looking good. Yeah, this is a big round that SU absolutely had to win, but already being down three. Looking at some sort of miracle. Try to come back into this one and 
way that the economy's been going, and yeah, Clabiella is going to manage to get one. Can hunt through a couple more. Recon Dart almost getting her smack dab in the face, but won't be the Recon Dart. It will be the gun of the Sova Sadie themselves. GDSU pulling those two rounds out together. Now up nine to eight. Shenandoah, the early dominating start they had is starting to back off as they moved towards the defensive end. Yeah, it's going to be pistols here for the side of SU. They have no money in their pockets to buy any sort of rifle to really combat the econ that GVSU has here. Uh, again, full vandals, one phantom as well on the side of GVSU. SU needs to try to find a hold, needs to try to get some money back in their favor. 9-8 now, the scoreline. Sacred, Sacred able to find two with the Sheriff Toria and Sadie already down. Sacred is a superstar when it comes to the Sheriff. If you guys remember way back at the beginning of the stream where we have that highlight clip, yeah. it's Sacred and three years ago with the <laughs> Sheriff, like just absolutely clicking heads. It's four of them to be exact. It's a Hunter's Fury. Out of Clabiella, a risky play, but it grabs Sid some way, somehow. All right, Shenandoah, still very much in this game, but a retake on A, far from simplistic GVSU. We know where they're stationed, but did Shenandoah, and they scaled them out. Masonic Dart to clear on site. Only one spot for them to sit either in hell or out towards this main area. And Sacred End, one across their placement. Oh no, but the party, the paint shells came through. Clabiella eventually out of the way. She's seen the ultimates once or twice. I was prepared to counter. I mean, SU, Sacred End, picking up three there with the Sheriff, able to even it up at nine rounds apiece on Ascent here. <laughs> Huge plays coming through, money back in their pockets, able to finally get this full buy. And now we see Noble again opting over towards this operator. Let's see what he can do. Noble is going to embody the spirit of the good guy tens. What he managed to do down main. This is his signature off map, but specifically for a jet. And Noble just wants to break that stereotype. He's like, hey, Almonds can do this too. We yeah. might play smokes, we might be controllers, but I can go ahead and peek angles. Opting to swap off of the operator, unfortunately, back Dang. over to the Santa. We won't get Noble with the rifle, the sniper rifle, rather, <laughs> just yet. But again, now we see GVSU slowly pushing towards this ace at all five all four members excuse me we see toria still over the hunter's fury will hit sid will find the kill onto ultraly slim as well able to find sacred not what you wanted to see on the side of su the hunter's fury absolutely genius out of sadie you can see why she is the captain for this team I and mean, leading gvsu into that point with just essentially a free kill Forcing Ultra Lee out of position, looking to the same with the shock darts and the recon. I mean, all the info is gathered. Sova so powerful on this map. Gets Rizier. Has had a quiet ascent thus far. Here is her chance to shine. Last one standing. Four players sat in her path. Tall tasks to ask, and it's going to end just in a flash. GVSU once again moving up around. 10-9 now for GVSU. Three rounds remaining to possibly force a map number three onto, I believe it was going to be Bind is the third map yep. in this series. But SU, again, are going to go back into this pistol round. Here's a shorty yeah. on the side of Sacred End. That'll be fun to see if he's able to get some huge pickups with the shorty there. Marshall on the side of Clabula opting out, still kind of thinking about it, possibly going to here. go with that uh, for the final decision here for Clabiella. But again, another save round coming through from SU. Yeah. Talking with the team a little bit earlier, when they start to succeed, it's when they're able to win these ones, right? They play an individualistic play style where they can isolate players and take them out in an honest duel. But it's just so hard to do when you're down on these rounds and essentially you only have a major opportunity to win every other. I mean, you're so down in terms of the weapons and it's only a matter of time before every single one goes down. Like you're looking to hit four or five shots on your opponent with a pistol compared to the one headshot that they need to yeah. take you out themselves. And you find yourselves in this situation where you're incredibly down in players, in numbers, you're expecting to go ahead and lose. They need to find something to kind of reignite that fire, that momentum that we know that they're capable of riding. We saw it on Lotus and at the very beginning of this map. And it's been lost here in round 20. 
Yeah, 11 to 9 now in favor of GVSU. Again, the Econ, that save round might be uh, what SU needed. However, they are able to now go on a full buy here. The Operator still getting toyed Noble. with here by Noble, trying Need to see if he wants Thanks. to go for it. Possibly will do so. Vandals and an Operator across the Hi. board here for SU. This is the round that they are putting all their chips on black here, trying to get this round. This will decide almost who will win this yeah. match. Right here. All GVSU, they need We're two really more round wins in order to get themselves and the win of the entire map. And only one more to get on map point. And you never, ever, ever want to be in map point because worst case or best case scenario then for Shenandoah would become you have to take it to a draw scenario. Cover, but Noble cover. on the op. Who plays at that angle? Well, the omen does. Can teleport back up, and now he has all of A to work with. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem he'll be shooting anybody else with an operator anytime soon. As GVSU appear to be on the complete opposite side of the angle. Can we stop jump scaring us with Sova? <laughs> uh, the Sova is everywhere. We will see them in our nightmares tonight most He's, likely. Sova's gonna Just jump me. scares every me. now and then. Doesn't even have to be related to Valorant. Possibly <gasps> Slim able to pick up the kill, however, on to like Sova in either. mid there. Yeah, not not a fan of the Sova jump scares. I agree. Sadie <laughs> again with the jump scare of their own on Sova to Ultra Lee Sacred okay. answering Spike back. Down, but mid. 3v3 still, Noble still alive with this Operator, now rotating over towards this mid-angle, possibly trying to catch someone out in rotation. It's coming on Sacred Econ, pick one of these players off, and all right, you get a trade. Left. Not ideal, not the end of the world either. You got good old Mr. Operator himself, and Cerezier currently working her way around. From point B, you have the lockdown here. I would love to see it come into play, especially to start zoning out these defenders. You can give Noble a free shot right now. She's looking for the opportunity. There's the prime location to pull it down. She needs to be hesitating a little bit longer. You can have to go push towards tree, win the one, and do it, but that's what they wanted. Waiting for Noble on to heaven, forcing Toria into their sight lines, and Cerezier to finish it off. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, the Killjoy ultimate coming down was clutch in that instance, right? Forcing GVSU to play fast. They can't hold those angles for long because once that timer hits zero, you can't move, you can't shoot. You're pretty much a sitting duck in that instance. That also opens the door there for Noble to find that angle, finding that shot onto Toria, meaning that UA has to try to find these kills fast. But with the pinch coming through from the two members of SU, able to seal the deal. Now back into the swing of things. The operator still in hand here for Noble. Vandals across the board, full buys from both sides. Shindoa did it once. Can they do it again? It was a really nice play with Cerezier. Major expectations when it comes to a lockdown. One of the most powerful ultimates in the game with its zoning and its deadliness in the back. Ooh, Noble! Almost managed to grab another with the up. Not quite this time. GVSU, though, that was enough to say, like, uh -uh, we're not going that way. Yeah, rotating back now, picking up the spike from the attacker spawn. Rotating towards this B site, Cerise, uh rotating back over to the A site. No one now on B for the side of SU, and really a good rotation there coming through from Grand Valley. Yeah, Grand Valley now Jokes moving over. towards B. Ain't have any fun with an operator today. Now that that shot has been called off, we Cerezier. It's only going to be on the run it back for the Phoenix. That's plenty of scouting information. GVS, you know the reinforcements are weak for the Hornets. If they finally get the group, it's going to be too late to stop the spike planting. Slim setting it in the back corner. But it appears that GVS, you are opting to pretty much all play towards this back site, which gives Shenandoah plenty of space to work with. I mean, you can just hold Noble down on just one of these angles, have the other one push through lane, and that's exactly what you want of Mr. Operator on the Omen Ultra Leaf. Flash onto the point, gets one, looking for more. Not quite there. It's Noble with his second. Does anyone dare to peek that out? You one have to know, remaining. it's the Operator guy, and you only have one choice. Man, You're gonna get scouted out one way standing. or another. But without the pistol at the last second, but no! It just decides to rush on in. Oh, Shenandoah so close to clutching it up, and it was just the smallest of errors, getting a little bit too overconfident after the kills they managed to grab. And it's gonna set them against a map point. 
map point now 12 to 10 in favor of GVSU. The buys will not be able to come across here for SU. The operator will be invested in again for Noble here. Two ults ready, the KO and the Omen ult up and available for this SU squad, but the Raze ult as well on the side of GVSU. If that is able to pick up a kill or two, that would be huge. The flash coming through here, aggression coming through from the SU Ooh. squad. Ultra really oh, unable no. to pick up the kill. Sadie will be able to take them out instead. It was an aggressive play. Now Shenandoah going to have to pull this back with the disadvantage. You wanted that ultimate so bad. And Sacred End locked up in a corner of the Hunter's Fury, checking him out. And all it takes is one bullet to send him down to a grave. Plant now on the site in the typical spot that we'll see in this part of the Ascent map. Shenandoah, they don't have a ton to work with. Noble, only so many flanks that he can try to set up. Maybe go behind them. Make them turn, but with an operator, what realistically are you going to attempt here? Cerezier on heaven. It's a risky peek, especially with only a sheriff. Not the opponents have identified that. They have no point in not peeking it, but it's Arkeshik Sadie through the wall. That's massive. This team's now even on up. Tabiela oh, wants to try to pull us up one thing, but nobody cleared hell on out if they want to win this map. It has to solely be in the hands of Noble. 26 HP and a dream trying to defuse through the smoke. He's locking it in. Is he going to manage to get it? There's no one as the bullets are connecting, and he doesn't get the timing is close as it may be. Shenandoah saw the dream fade away just as they were getting the taste. Uh, Noble was so, so oh. close to getting that defuse. They were unable to find the spray. Only 26 HP on the Omen, but just a sliver too slow to try to make oh. the play happen. We are now moving to map number three. Both sides, the attacking side has wow. been the name of this series. It absolutely has, and Shenandoah, as good as they started out with this game, they started to fumble, and especially when it came to more of these middle fades, there was rarely an occasion where the spike got down. Whenever they had to do a retake, they looked fine, because in those situations, typically, you have enough players alive, and I'm not including any save rounds out here. I'm only talking about full buys. Right. And in the other rounds where you go down in more of these neutral grounds, that's where the problem is. We saw a couple of different spots where some players were way farther out than they probably should have been. And it's yep. the same thing that GVSU themselves got taken advantage of by the Hornets in their own defensive phase. And realistically, it came back to bite them here. And they're just going to fall short of winning out the second map. But the nice part about it being a best of three, you still have one more life. Yeah, map number three now is going to be bind. This is something that both teams are comfortable on. This is one pick that SU is very comfortable on, one of their better maps that they like to play uh, as a team here. But this is one that has also been in the game for quite some time. So both squads will be very comfortable. And it's going to be interesting mm -hmm. to see if they go back to this double duelist comp, right? If they ditch yeah. the Sova and go back towards this raise jet kind of play style that they had uh, so much success on earlier yeah. on. Shenandoah thrown slightly off a kilter with a close loss on Ascent. The series is going to be tied up at one and one. A victor yet to be decided. We're going to find out who that's going to be just after a five minute break. We'll see you in a few minutes.
Welcome back, everybody, uh, to the broadcast. We are now going into map number three on bind here. GVS, you were able to secure and wrap up game number, or uh, map to rather 13 to 10 on ascent. Uh, a very close last round there. Noble just barely unable to get that defuse to keep Shenandoah in map number two, but now going to a very confident and comfortable bind map. Shenandoah mm -hmm. very comfortable with this one, looking to close things out here in the best of three. Said at the beginning of the series, the maps that Shenandoah want to play are the three that we currently have here. Lotus number one and bind number two for their picks. Because this is where they get to bring back that double duelist. And yeah. that's a much more comfortable spot. Clapiella didn't do bad on the, I almost said Hanzo, on the Sova. <laughs> whatsoever and and that's something we want to point out is Clabiella is a flexible player yep. it's just that when you practice so much on these specific duelists it's a completely different style of game that you're playing and you know Ascent needs to go just move on from it it was right. close it was a 13 10 a lot mm -hmm. of things went right but you also started to find these larger errors at the end in terms of positioning yep. when you're trying to push in the peaks that you're making and and I, I was still we started out the series so great with that ultra lee ace right I know, we had yeah. that ace clabiella had her big moment sacred end just like popped foreheads with a sheriff casually uh -huh. the same thing with Theresier. i mean it's been looking great. The team is on it. That's the point. It's just the things that they're doing wrong that have been coming back. And those specific yeah. things, like, or with the aim. The aim has been impeccable. Mm -hmm. It's the timing, the positioning. DVSU are slowly starting to figure out how Shenandoah likes to play their game. And now they're going to switch it up with Bind, arguably uh, the trickiest map. And I'm for yeah. not as in tricky, difficult, but tricky because of the teleporters that yes. can come into play. Yeah, the teleporters are definitely something that both teams on both sides are going to look to utilize to their full potential, right? The fast rotates that those provide for the attacking side, especially when you're going up uh, be, yeah, be long uh, there on that left side of the map is something that can really just flip things upside down, right, for both sides. Once you get those rotations, once you hear those teleport triggers, that means, uh-oh, they're not even close yeah. to us anymore. They're on the other side of the map. We need to either go through the teleporters and hope they're not sitting there waiting inside or possibly just go on this long rotation and retake the point. 
Bind is one of those maps, similar to Lotus, in the sense that teams are going to be moving back and forth between those objectives before they decide on which site they're fully going to plant down on. But you're also going to make some changes within that composition. As we mentioned earlier, Double Duelist making a return sacred and gets his beloved Reyna that yeah. he's been raving about all day long. We were talking to him too early. He's like, I get to play Reyna? That's what I'm talking about. I mean, he yeah. he's into it. I mean, this is the character where he feels very comfortable on. Cerezia as well, very confident in her ability to play the Cypher. But I mean, the biggest notes, we're getting some new faces. You got Fade, you have Brimstone. Mm -hmm. So it's more of this meta with Bind that's different from a lot of our other maps. Yeah, I'm excited to see how this Reyna does, right? Because this is something that Sacred and did mention earlier uh, on in the day, being very excited to get their hands on this agent, on this uh, character here. And this is a agent that can really play for themselves, right? They have the flash, they have the abil ability to self-sustain uh, a lot of damage that comes their way. A and really, mm -hmm. this is Sacred End needs to perform or else this Reyna might fall flat. What's interesting though is on the other side, we are have yet to see any Viper yet today. And she's been one of those agents with the highest pick rate yep. in competitive Valorant. So we're gonna get a bit of that for the first time from Slim. And especially when you're holding down a site that a K-Fax that you get from the orb, from your wall, from your veil. Like there's so much that Viper brings to the table that makes her a menace to have mm -hmm. to walk through. And not to mention you're partnering that with a brimstone for even more smokes. The one thing that you really are gonna lack though, you don't have a ton of initiating power right. on your side. I mean, really, you're looking towards the Gecko, who's slowly been sneaking his way into the Valorant meta with how quickly his abilities can be regained. Mm -hmm. Wasn't the greatest that we saw from GVSU earlier, but right. it's definitely a solid pick to pull out, especially with we're going to start looking at Shenandoah. They're on the attack, and so where they get to start to set that pace. This is where they're confident, they're comfortable, mm -hmm. and they're going to have to come out roaring. Yeah, this is something that last map ended in the 7-5 here on the attacking side for the Hornets. And being able to get that closer to uh, a 9-3 or an 8-4 in their favor is something that they're going to have to try to look for, right? Because being able to get that hump only really making it that five maps remaining, uh, four or five rounds rather, remaining for the side of SU is something that they're going to try to look to do here on this attacking side. Uh, something that they're very confident on, that they play very fast. They are going to open up with something pretty standard, that kind of 2-1-2 two, uh, two split here over towards Showers. We see the Cypher kind of still sitting around this mid area here, but slow and steady so far from the Hornets. Yeah, I'm going to be taking multiple angles on this B. Some towards showered, some towards more of that main area. Where this starts to get a little difficult, though, is with those boxes and showers. It's such a small doorway to push through. I mean, you're just going to see the nades, the mollies, the, the uh, nano swarms. Like, everything's just pumped through that small corridor. And you're baiting out the minimal util that you're going to have on a pistol round. Shenandoah, never a fan of such pistol rounds, yeah. as we have learned in the past. And... I'm trying to squint at my mini-map here. It does appear that some players are still anchoring for GVSE. So Shenandoah, while they are at an advantage on one side, one enemy just remaining. walking straight into the hands of Sid and Yue. And a lot of these pistol Close. rounds often defensive favored just because it's the one time you want to just push everybody through one spot, well, try you. to overwhelm the opponents quickly. But GVSU, they're prepared for such a split approach. Yeah, GVSU's pistol rounds and save rounds have looked very positive on their sides, whereas on the side of SU, they haven't been having huge pistol rounds to open up uh, these attacking and defensive sides here. Usually, uh, I think almost every pistol round that they had opening up uh, either side has resulted in a loss on the side of the Hornets here. And now, just trying to regain going mm -hmm. with pistols yet again. Not going to opt to buy anything just yet. Saving up for a full buy opportunity possibly for round number three here. But yep. still... Slight buys from GVSU. Still potential here for SU to get some good trades. They're going to do a two and three split once again. Spike, key point though, staying away from this main objective. They're going to try to bait them a little bit more towards showers, but this is an aggressive push from Toria Slim. They don't think they have the better guns, and GVSU did exactly what they should have there, is take the battle where you are favored. 
regardless if numbers are even. And that's just the automatic signal. SU, they're going to make the rotation over to B. Now, relatively undefended. But we'll didn't know the Cypher counter lurking in the corner. And Sadie there as well. Yeah, the Cypher Ooh. in position. Wow. Able to pick Gage up to Noble with the Spectre. A huge pick from that hookah rotation coming through from SU 2v5 now situation here for Sarize and Ultra One Lee trying to get some kills. Sadie again picking Sadie. up another on to the uh. Cypher and a third <laughs> okay. on to Ultra okay. Lee. GVSU looking strong. I mean, talk about a flexible player. Sadie started on Omen, then went over yep. to Sova, of all things, <laughs> and then now on Cypher. Three drastically different agents in the realm of Valorant. And you once again bring it up why Shenandoah, you want to hunt down Sadie. Like, that yeah. that's your player. And that's what Claudia, the point that yeah. she was making, she's like, all right, she's the highest ranked player on GVSU. If we lose, it's because Sadie likely is popping off and their team is, is setting them up well. And that's what these past two rounds have turned out to be. I mean, Sadie held that site down seemingly on her own. Yeah. I mean, SU now hovering over towards oh, this, this B long nice hookah push angle here. But GVSU doing yeah. a good job reading that. The Cypher now over, setting up onto this A site, onto this mid teleporter here, reading the play from SU. Now a possible collision here in uh -oh. long. Copy Does she know? Oh no! The smoke's out! Terrible timing for UA! But here's the opening that the Hornets have been searching for a little, buddy. You don't stand a chance against a Phantom. So they're going to start to book it. The fight wide open now. The Molly's only going to do so much. Spike being planted just on the side of this little tunnel. Now Shenandoah. Wait for GVSU to come to them. We have a number of advantage. No need to necessarily peek unless you're confident in winning the duels. And historically, Shenandoah, you lose the first two rounds. And here is where that streak starts. Yeah, able to now invest in full buys uh, almost across the board here. Ultra League going down does mean that they have to settle for that light shield uh, on the fade here. But like we've seen in the previous maps, right? They go down 2-0, but are able to bring it back in these later rounds. 2-1 now, SU possibly trying to ignite some kind of streak here on this attacking side, opting now to stack mid here by this teleporter, trying to force an A push, trying to get some early kills. They're gonna have the buffs with the Brimstone going in, yet Sacred End blinded, couldn't see a thing. The trade, now it's going through the teleporters. Yes, they're playing this aggressive approach, but guess who is on A? The entirety of Shenandoah, now it's GVSU on the re-approach, doubly outnumbered here. Sadie, a realistic threat, urgently to Hamlet across the map. What a shot from him to close this out. And this is what we said. Once Shenandoah start to get rolling on these full by rounds, there's little that can stop them. Yeah, and the aggression and the pressure that SU is coming out with those last two attacking rounds, they are not playing slow. They are bringing the fight to GVSU quickly. They are not playing a patient game. They are trying to get out to a commanding lead here early. Now they were able to tie it up to a piece here. Round number five starting here in just a few seconds. But SU, again, stacking towards this mid area, over towards this teleporter, trying to repeat what they just did here against Grand Valley. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just to hope the Grand Valley aren't expecting the same thing. And who would? Not be able, she's bolting herself straight into the back. Bye bye, UA. Now that she's into it, she's fully has those party rockets on board. Should she opt to use them? Won't have the opportunity, though. Blown up by the paint shells of her Ray's counterpart. Now, Ultra Lee in a bit of trouble. Flashed up in the back. The judge of all things picked up Sacred End. Doesn't have a problem dealing with that type of weapon. The spike still down, but little sight lines available. The advantage of having double controller is going to come up big. The defuse already One started. Slim remaining. must be forced off, and Sarah's here wrapping around the side. Everyone lift towards this left part. And it's going to be another Shenandoah win. Love how patiently they started to yep. play after Abby just blasted the gates open. Yeah, I mean, we saw Clabiella just launch herself into harm's way, able to pick up an early kill onto UA, and then the patience getting that spike down early in that round, and then Sacred End just playing around that U-Haul to perfection. Serge as well, able to pick up er uh, the kills on the back end of that round. A and yeah, I mean, that was just perfectly <laughs> executed pace there from SU.
This is the pace we want to continue. See them rocketing forwards at. And we've had enough A. We're going to go towards B. Half in long, half in hookah. Are they going to manage to make it happen, though? We got some party yes, rockets no. on the line. Clabiella, we're looking at you. Two for three on the day. What magic can she make happen? She can try to get the timing on to Sadie. In fact, it'll be Orchard, yes, with the final blow. It's teamwork not taking any of these duels alone. Now with the spike laid down. This is the speed that Shenandoah have been working at. GVSU wanted the combat, but everybody is piled back into Hall. But they're not going to peak all at the same time. But it's Clabiella with both. Who needs a giant explosion if you have the piercing kills? Clabiella able to find two One in CT. Noble as well finding Slim. Clabiella with three on to Toria wow. as well. This attacking side from SU is looking incredibly oh, strong right familiar. now. Four we to two now in, uh, in favor of SU. This there. is what we saw in map number one. They went down 2-0 in their attacking round, but won four straight back to back to back to back to bring it back. And now a huge uh, economic advantage here on the side of the Hornets. And not only that, GVSU, I mean, they're stuck in this pattern where it's either, it's every other round. You're buying, you're saving, you're buying, you're saving. And this is where they started to fall apart with Shenandoah on their fourth round win in a row right now. What really can manage to stop them? You're going to have a nightmare to clear the entire site right now. And that's realistically all you're going to need it. Sadie seems to be playing up towards B mid in Hookah. There's nobody on the objective, so Claviella can pull out the rockets if she wants to do so. Yet it might be a forced miss, as a matter of fact. GBSU, little opposition rating on B. Yeah, the ultimate will come through from GBSU. The Brimstone will not be able to find any kills there just yet, but the plant coming down there from Sarazier, uh, able to pick up the kill. And, and right then there. Sacred End with two okay. of their okay. own. Noble able to answer back onto Sadie as well. 4v2 now for the side of Sacred GBS. End. Not again, Sacred not again. Going crazy right now. Noble able to pick up the last kill onto UA. And this attacking side for SU is not looking like it's going to stop. No. And you know what the big sign of it was there? Sacred End was on camera and he didn't die. It got close. We got down to 8 HP, but he lived on. Shenandoah, they are on a roll. And the thing that stopped them last time was this time out. Yep. Where it's a combination of the overconfidence getting to them or the change of strategy that GVSU was able to muster. And honestly, GVSU haven't been playing terribly. They just haven't had great reads on where yeah. Shenandoah are pushing. And not to mention, Clabiella has been taking over the game on this raise, on these super fast entries, using these black, yeah. these blast packs so well. And all the space, the time that binds the rest of Shenandoah, all they need to do, follow suit, chuck some util in the back. And suddenly, like just like that, poor Sadie hasn't been able to accomplish much at all. Yeah, and it's really off of this aggression that Clabiella is playing with right now. Playing so aggressive, not afraid to go in 1v3, 1v4 with these blast packs, like you said. And with these plays, Clabiella is almost able to pick up one kill in return for their death. And then you can see Noble as well, 7-2-2 two, and two on the scoreboard, able to pick up kills in response following the aggression from Clabiella. And really everyone on the side of SU playing very, very well. Role of Duelist, Fabiola, you can notice uh, the difference to when she was on the Sova to the Ray. She just seems so much more comfortable on this role and just blast the doors open. Also, I don't say just knock on it, you're blasting them. Maybe the Viper's Pit really early, blocking out mid. So we see a risky push on through. All it takes is one pellet of a judge to shut her on down. Typically, the Viper's Pit, though, is an automatic rotate yet for Shenandoah. It's a stim beacon. We're thrown out of blind, and in we go. We're going to try to find the kill. Yeah, they're going to grab UA. We're on the back of the boxes and still manage a plant. This Viper's Pit rendered completely useless. Yeah, cutting off that mid angle with the Viper ultimate is good to start, but the rotation back through showers there from SU, able to get behind GVSU, able to get those kills on the board. Sid able Sid. to find two of their own sacred and Ultra Lee down. Clabiella finding one in response on Tutoria. 2v1 now situation. Sid with the ultimate ready for use. 
the ultimate from Brimstone will come down. Yeah. However, able to force Sid off of that plant nade. Now trying to get to half Clabiella, trying to Ooh. rotate around yeah. these boxes, will be able to secure the kill. That's three on the board there for Clabiella. 6-2 now in favor of SU for the map. Charges. Clabiella is Break. just on it right now. Anything you could ask of her, She's going to be able to deliver, and we're continuing to notice how big of the lead that Shenandoah are pulling away for the first time after a timeout. They're extending their lead even further. GVSU, they had a plan, but the mid-Viper Pit absolutely negated. And the fact that Shenandoah decided to stick with it, they realized yeah. it would take too long to get over to B-Site. The risk not worth the reward, and it just forces another GVSU half by. Yeah, a split approach now here for round number nine for SU. Three moving towards Hookah, two others towards B long here. It's just the Cypher yet again on this site. Sadie with the Judge trying to find an angle onto Ultrally. Not able to do so. Clabiella able to read the rotate there. The aggression now. CT Hall being crammed in by GVSU Sacred. However, able to find two Sid and UA3 into the back pocket of Sacred. Possibly a fourth. Clabiella will be able to find that last one onto Slim. A flawless round there from SU looking super strong here moving in to the final rounds here of their attacking side. Flawless round and all players alive but also in the way they took that fight with such speed and it's so difficult for players to rotate on a defensive end on bind and that's where Shenandoah's aggression is such a big advantage. It's why they want to pick bind knowing that if they move as fast as they are continuing to do so no there's just no chance for GVSU to take in a reasonable battle and it's just been poor Sadie receiving a beating after beating. I mean they keep leaving her alone on the objective and all she can do against Huga, it's one player sacred and chucks the eye out. Yes, a trade one for one. Who else is on B to stop them? Serizier will fall in response to that push, but Sacred End is able to secure that kill. Now the rotate coming through. Sid, the first one to respond, making their way through this CT hallway. Well, we already see Ultrally setting up, looking to find the angle in response to stop the flank opportunity. Will not be able to win the gunfight over Sid. Will yeah. be able to get one Sacred End answering back with two of their own wow. UA. Able to answer back Sid Ooh. as well with the ultimate onto Clabiella. Raise finding the opposition in prime That's position. Crazy. Now it's all up to Ooh. Noble. Will be able to find one 1v1 one one situation now. Noble versus Sid. No ultimates available. The stim will come through. Will not oh. be able to find the kill. Sid will find three in that round. Bringing it back. Hopefully trying to even out the scoreboard here for GVSU. A very important round for Grand Valley State. Be taking a brutal beating from the Hornets, and one way to top them down to size is with an incredible clutch such as that one. It wasn't necessarily an error from Shenandoah, and it was honestly them coming back with such speed, forcing them to back off. Sacred End had to play aggressive in that exact situation. Couldn't make much of it at all once the dust started to settle. And the big thing that we want to start to see is GVSU. They keep leaving Sadie on their own in Shenandoah, they're recognizing it. And mm -hmm. while that didn't work, it worked out for one time again. Can GVSU manage to bail Sadie out from the onslaught of trouble they're about to face? Yeah, again, the same approach coming in here from SU3 in towards Hookah, two over towards this B long. But when you look at the Econ, losing that round on the side of SU is not too troublesome, no. right? We're able to pick up one harvest. Okay, Sadie. Sadie, Sacred already down, finding Woo! two. Rotating through this little corridor that they were able to work with, Ultrally will be able to shut them down, however. But picking up two off the board in that single 1v5 hold is huge for GVSU. And all credit to Zadie. I was saying, oh, what a poor Cypher player. We're facing the same <laughs> fate of 1v5-ing. But the fact that you take two down with you is quite impressive. But that's where those teleporters come in handy. You push in B-long, and that's why a lot of teams opt to go B first, and then everywhere else second. You can make the fast rotates, and suddenly, Shenandoah, they're the ones in the driver's seat. Get the piercing kills, ultraly forced oh, back, but not me. far enough. They're starting to absolutely tremble. Before GVSU, the confidence is gone. The diffuse is happening. Can Clavia have anything to say about it? She's picking up everything but the one to stop the diffuse. 
Seven to four now on the board. GVSU Last slowly the clawing half. themselves back as we reach the near point of our halftime. Yeah, and now as we look at this Econ coming across the board here, Pretty close to being even here on this last round. Full buys are going to come through from every member here. Noble will opt again for this Operator Toria. Uh, of course. Not yet going for a buy just yet. It will be the Vandal with the full shield as expected. Full Vandals, one Phantom on the mm -hmm. side of Sadie here. Hunkered down yet again on that B site, doing very well. But now back towards this mid teleporter push here from SU. Will they be able to make it happen? Why does the Brimstone have the Operator? Why? Why does the Brimstone have her Operator? I mean, don't give it to Abby because she's straight in their faces, unfortunately dead just as quickly. Well, all right, Noble. You have the op, what you can do with it. Gotta show something. It's the last round. Might as well use all the tools you have at your disposal. I mean, with Sadie and UA both sitting on their ultimate, it's gonna be a tough comeback. Even if the spike manages to go down, it's easier to sneak her way on out. While she will, Sacred End certainly cannot both players now stuck in the connector. The op shot, it's gonna go wide. A rare miss from the Noble. And a difficult end to Shenandoah's attacking phase, despite the start that they had to bring them back seven rounds in a row. It's gonna end with a couple consecutive losses as they transition to the defensive side. Yeah, and this is exactly what we saw in map two, right? Switching the 7 5 attacking finish swap over to this defensive side for Shenandoah. Uh, again, they're going to go with these ghost buys, some uh, small light shields here, sticking with the classics is Noble and Sarah Zay. Uh, but yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens here in this pistol round. Not common that SU wins these ones. No, and this is going to be really tough. I mean, Shenandoah, please go to pistol round just just for funsies. The small guns are fun. I, I don't know. It's easier at a closer range. When you're playing yeah. on a scent when it's so far, you have to hit them with like 10 shots before they die. Here, maybe two or three. So now that you have this closer angle at your disposal, what can you manage to do with it? It's also be a lot easier for Cerizier. She had a very quiet round. I mean, Cypher finding value on right. an attacking side, especially when you're moving as fast as you are. It's going to be challenging, but so you want to hold down in the shower. You want to keep them farther back. And all right, Ultra Lee, we see you. King of pistol rounds. All righty. Two for one drain. Take those any day of the week. And do it now. They know they're going to get pressured on this A side lamp since where Sid, at least, has been identified. Not quite sure if Slim is recognized to be in the same position. Clavilla just misses out on the head of the Rays. No sudden moves really to be taken so far. The push over to B has been identified, and this is big. Shenandoah are going to arrive just as the spike is being planted. Yeah, the rotation oh, coming through from GVSU Sacred Tower, like you mentioned, is available on this flank angle, playing very patient. Now jumping through Puka is Toria. All members now in the area. Noble possibly able to find one. one. Yes, Woo! Sacred on the flank as well, spike finding planted. the kill on to Toria. Now it is just... Slim left alive behind the boxes. That's the Cypher it. able to secure the kill on the side of SU. That is what they needed to have happen in this opening round here. A pistol win for the Hornets. Beautiful turnaround and changing the narrative of every single pistol round that they've won it before. A bit of BM from Sacred Ends and hey, not <laughs> this time. You know, he's still been having that great game on the arena. 14 and 8. Come with Abby's 15 and 7. Yeah. I mean, these duelists are absolutely taking over the series, and it's been massive for Shenandoah, playing with a substitute and still managing to make every single piece work just as it should. GVS, though, this is their first time not up on a pistol round. The first time that Shenandoah will have this bonus to work with. They managed to work anything, just get a couple of eliminations. That's going to be their entire goal. GVSU approaching this mid area again towards this teleporter. We see Sacred and Noble on their lonesome over on this B side. It's the 5v3 push here in favor of GVSU. Rotations now possibly coming through. The boom bot will come out from Clabby Ella, but oh. everyone is in U-Haul. Cypher able to pick up an early kill onto UA, and that is something that you wanted to see from Cerise there. Yes, yeah, there is here. The character so much better on this defensive position, and you're able to use that knowledge you gather with the tripwires, the cages, everything to your advantage now. 
And rather, GDV, as you are at the mercy of Shenandoah instead. So, Fadizier continuing to push up. And you can tell she's starting to get aggressive, but you hear the teleporter come on out, and that is where you start to put on your running shoes and book it over to Site B. But again, Sacred is still in that position. Again? He did not opt to rotate on that push there. Noble will go down to Sid Slim, finding Clabiella as well, but Ulsherly able to answer back. Sid will be falling. Everyone hunkered yeah. down in this U-Haul position. Yet again, Sacred will be able to find the angle. 2v2 now. Sadie able to trade it back in CT. Ulsherly, Sarazay able to find two. That is three for the Cypher. Able to pick up another round for SU. Sarazier just needed to be on the defense. She's like, guys, let me actually use my tools, my utility, and look what can happen. And even that was just straight up aim. The positioning, you know where Sacred is, holding off the back of the U-Haul. You just need to watch the remainder of the haul. And now you're pushing in nine to five. You take your bonus round now. Here is where things get tricky. Shenandoah don't necessarily have the utility to buy. They lost several of their players. They're now at a disadvantage once more once we get into these guns. Yeah, Serizier able to find a good angle there onto that CT hall, able to pick up three there, sealing the deal there for that round for SU. And now you will see SU here setting up on this A hold, coming in through these showers here, trying to deny access to that angle from GVSU, and we'll be able to do so for the mo meantime. Hyperwall out and Slim gets the timing on Sarazier just as she was pulling the gun out of the holster. Ooh, unfortunate end to the Sentinel player. Ultimately, though, we'll at least manage to trade it out for one. 3v3, it's Glabiella's time to make things explode within the kill feed. We'll shortly be Noble now on the outlaw. This guy loves his snipers in on the most unconventional characters. And he's like, oh no, you had the timing on it, no! Just like two more seconds of holding the angle, Noble, and you had it. So tragic when we can see the things that players cannot. Now it's on to Sacred to clutch up. Only so much you can do with a ghost against three Vandals. Yeah, I mean, good rotation there coming through from GVSU. And really just a great, strong attack there. Being patient, not overextending, not overforcing anything into that site until they knew they had numbers and that they had the uh, available intel uh, dispersed throughout the squad there. And SU, I believe that's the first map drop there on the defensive side so far. 9-6, however, still in favor. And we found another bear. <laughs> <laughs> we found another bear. That is awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad. We, we, we like the bear count. Keep going up. I've completely lost count on the I tally. No yeah. um, oh, yeah. Production, on the I hope we can get like a, one of those sticky notes up with the tally going. And awesome. I mean, d does thrash count as an animal? Would, would that count as something? Is it a, oh, it's a like bear? A, is it kind of like a it's, it's thing? A porcupine Sacred, thing? however, able know. to pick up Woo! one out of hookah and able to get out with their lives there. Sierra able to find one as well onto Slim. And really, almost a flawless round coming through here from SU. A near flawless only for her lonely Sadie. Getting flashbacks of their time on defense, holding the site B. Now facing a 1v5, won't quite be flawless. Yet a Shenandoah win shall push them up to double, double digits. Double digits indeed, 10-6 now for SU. Three rounds left on this defensive side to solidify their victory here to advance to a four and one record here on the season. Looking strong, looking poised to do so. Econ heavily in their favor. GVSU trying to get some buys here. It's gonna have to be a half buy here for Slim and for Toria. We'll <gasps> opt uh, for the two Spectres. There's a cat. There was a cat in the box. Oh, that was awesome. Cat in the box. Oh, that was the best thing all day. Box? I like it. Cat in the box, Jack in the box, cat in the box. Even the box. better, because Jack in the box, or the cat in the box doesn't scare you. No, yeah, probably not. I probably. hope not. Well, you never know. Cats are mischievous. Sometimes. Cats are mischievous? Yeah. Yes, that's true. Sometimes, like, you never know. Like, they'll purr in the next minute and, like, try to chomp on your hand. Yeah, that's what my cat does. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Trying to do what you can here. And Ultra Lee, once again, tries to hold the showers down by himself. Met with three GVSU players. For a second, I'm still holding this angle. I mean, as soon as those walls come down, you know that he's booking it toward that teleport line. And he's going to still manage to grab Sadie in terms of a trade, and that's actually incredible value here. 
especially with that ultimate almost being online, or actually was online for the sake of GVSU. You're not going to have the same information. And now, Shenandoah, they know that they're split. There are still two that were scouted out in showers. They have to make their way over to B for any solid attempt. The only issue is... There's no idea for the Horn no way for the Hornets to know who exactly has that spike and Noble's just gonna have to do his best to stay alive as these four players are gonna start their push. Yeah, rotation coming through, smokes coming down on the side of GVSU with a push coming Ooh. through the rocket. Goodbye, we'll Noble. Find it's Mark Noble is all over the place right now. The rocket the connecting. Side. And now 4v2. <laughs> Gruesome! <laughs> Gruesome! <laughs> He's all over the place in the world. He's just like, I do not need that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's a rough fate to, to get blown up with a tactical missile. Yeah. That's, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you there. So. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, you're looking at a retake. You got both of the rifles that you want, but Mr. Reeves here, it's a sound cue just to try to get out of the teleporter, which is brutal. Javiel waiting in the spawns. If you're looking at where Shenandoah's Econ is, at least for the two players, you can afford to get the trades now. It's actually more beneficial if Shenandoah can manage to get an elimination. That's exactly what they need. They're starting to get aggressive. Javiel is just playing on the cleanup. Even if you don't end up winning the round, the value forcing GVSU onto a lower economy next round is going to be big. Yeah, having to force GVSU to buy two extra rifles than they might have had to if... Clabiola was not able to pick up those kills is huge. 19 and 9 now. Topping the scoreboard for SU is Clabiola. And we <gasps> found another bear. little bear. How do they know where that is? Like, how hard do you have to go looking to identify the bear? Is that what they're doing in between rounds? Is like Probably. looking for bears? Yeah, I, I just, maybe. We'll yeah. have to ask Vic after. I mean, I, I know our observers do a pretty good job of knowing uh, where all of the little cool little cute things uh, <laughs> might be hiding <laughs> in these Valorant maps. Yeah, it keeps us entertained between maps. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And Valorant can be a slow game, but uh, not this time. Early elimination. Secret end. Uh, guess where he is? I can tell you by B teleporter, at least was. Actually, in Hookah, as a matter of fact. Shouldn't don't know that they're not going to push B or mid. It's a full-on A rush with the four remaining players. I should make that three. So there's the air. Is it playing pretty length here? And then Lamps, now the locations of everybody else has been revealed. It's a huge advantage within the Vipers pit. If they're still going to push into it, all it takes is the Judge. Not even much needing to connect. Down to one HP, the plant, a deadly post plant. Arguably the worst one of them all to have to fight into. Cersei has absolutely no idea what pain she's about to hit with just the Viper and Noble. With a dream, we'll manage to grab UA, but with the other two lurking within the green mist below. You're looking at a crazy play just out of Noble to make this happen. Noble might be able to find this angle, we'll walk instead towards U-Haul. Might actually, <gasps> of course, no! be able to find the kill. The pit's However, down. That is huge, but oh, the time is going to run out. Both will now run away from the bomb here. Toria yeah. and Noble will be able to save their weapons here. 10-8 now in favor of SU, but GVSU closing the gap. We're starting to notice this pattern too, is Shenandoah often are winning these rounds on eliminations, not off of these spike plants. Yes, that was more true on the defense, but a similar pattern can be seen, and that's from that aggressive play style, whereas GVSU are they more passive? They're allowing their util to do more of the work. The bomb mm -hmm. to force the players to come to them and therefore giving GVSU that advantage in these post-plant situations. Launching so smoke. Shenandoah, if they can stop the push before the spike goes down, they're good to go. But as soon as the bomb hits the ground, their ability to recover is really difficult to margin in here on bind. Yeah, so easy, eh? and Sacred over towards this B site yet again. Now we see GVSU trying to make their way in towards this U-Haul Noble in a good uh, position here Ooh, to find the kill onto Sid. Flick. Will be able to do so. That is an early pickup here. A possible wow. second for Noble. Sadie as well dropping. And now the oh rocket no. coming out from Clabiella. <laughs> will hit just about nobody. Toria and Slim able to answer back. Slim with two. Serze able to find the kill in response, 2v2 now here for SU. And Noah managed to clean the house, even with another missed raise ultimate. Now a 50-50 shot <laughs> on that one. Sure, no, Clabiola will be kicking herself for it. 
Well, at least with the IA cleared out, there's only one spot for Grand Valley State to go, and that is over to our lovely boxes here on Site B. Plant coming in. You know Slim has to be close at Sacred End. Shall find the shot. They seem to ping B long. They know exactly what UA is trying to do. They're gonna try to take the 2v1 as a matter of fact, and it was just the move to begin with. Shenandoah have found their rhythm once more. And they're gonna manage to gain a round. Yes, yeah, Sarizier able to get the defuse as well, getting that ultimate point back in their favor, trying to get close to be able to have that ult, which will be huge coming up in these last two rounds. 11 to 8 now in favor of SU. Two rounds remaining to close out this map number three, and a timeout looks like it will come through. We'll take a quick minute breather here. Yeah, we'll take a quick breather. You can talk about all your bears now. Oh, we can't talk about... So how many do you think we have? <laughs> You offered, and I will I, take that. You know that. what? I right, will fine. take I, that I did dangle run. the carrot in front of you, or the bear, <laughs> rather. Or the honey jar. I don't even know. The where are we going honey jar? This? I don't know. We we're, we've got to be at least past 16. I, I think we might have hit, like, the 20 Did we hit mark. a 20? Yeah, because there was, like, 20? a few frames where we had, like, six bears doing oh, some worship true. thing. Yeah. yeah. We're probably talking game stuff and, like, couldn't acknowledge the bears because yeah. we can only do one thing at once, you yeah. know? It and probably the game stuff's a little bit more important. but It, it probably yeah, is, but, like... The Bears, man. The Bears. I'm telling you, the Bears, the football team. We don't talk about them. Yeah. We'll we'll we'll, we'll touch on that on another day <laughs> when. Um, yeah, we'll we'll talk about that later actually, yeah. but yeah. I mean, if we want to talk more game stuff, important thing, statistics. Look who's coming up. It's our buddy Sacred End. Yeah. He loves his Reina. Purple yep. is a great color, and Sacred End certainly seems to agree with that. 21 and 11 as a KD is utterly ridiculous. Yeah. We're starting to look at this map. And no oh, GDSU, you've wrapped up another timeout round. You have to do a half by Bulldogs, Judges, maybe mm -hmm. a Vandal across yeah. the board. Yes, still rifles, but against the one shot weapons that we are going to get from the Hornets. Very rough place to continue pushing on, and DVSU incredibly split right now. Just yeah. scouting out, looking for info. Yeah, trying to find some info is GVSU1 approaching towards Hookah here. Smokes will come down, but not a whole lot to really go off of just yet on the side of GVSU. We know that, at least we know, that there are three people <laughs> hovering around this B site. Sacred N still hovering over towards that teleporter, that B teleporter that he's been playing all map long on this defensive side has been coming up huge for the side of SU, but again, both sides playing very patient, very slow. GVSU trying to find some tidbit of information to make their move. Well, also push can have its advantages where you can get a read on where your opponent is positioned, where this U-tail might be set up, and even get an elimination to open. But it loses you out on this time, and then you're forced to make a rash decision where as your opponent's almost attempting to force a mistake. They're gonna push through B long where Sacred End is doing his thing. All it takes is a good old fashioned heal. That's a second now for the Reina player. And he's still gonna be alive to fight another day. Empress online, should he opt to use it? Shenandoah currently up, certainly wouldn't hurt on the brink of match point, but with the time is where it stands, I mean, Sid, yeah, you gotta try something, One turn it into remaining. absolutely nothing. Match point is gained for the Hornets. GVSU fall yet again. Yeah, and with this Econ, SU is gonna be able to get a full buy out of this round. And on the side of GVSU, it's gonna be a little oh. bit of the same of last round. Light shield, some Bulldogs, a Vandal, and then a Spectre in the hands of Sadie here. Does have the ultimate up and available, looking to try to use that one in this round, trying to get some info if they can get an early pick on in this round. But SU defense has been looking super strong here in map number three. The hard part is too, GVSU, they half bought last round. So instead of just going, they didn't want to go up to this match point because now best case scenario, you're forcing overtime. But you're also having to fight with Bulldogs and a Spectre. I mean, that's yeah. far, far from ideal. Shenandoah absolutely destroying oh, yeah. when it's coming to these rifle gameplays, and it's not going to take much. You have three out of your five ultimates available to use. And only Sadie's for GVSU, and you're going to need an elimination first if you want to attempt to activate it. Yeah. You're not going to have time to work with. You need to make a move fast. Everyone's surrounding on A. Noble scouted out. Takes quite a bit of poke, as a matter of fact. 
with the paint shells thrown into the back, forcing him further into the lamp's area. Where he smokes down on a site, the spike has been abandoned down A, so even though GVSU have cleared the site, the spike is nowhere near it. Toria, how it Toria? able to pick up those two kills? I was looking at that B teleporter flank will not come through from the side of SU positively, but yeah. Noble able to find one. Okay. Clabiella okay. answering okay. as well. Sadie trying to find kills UA as well. Noble and Clabiella will fall. Left. It's Ooh. a 3v1 situation. Cerizier has to try to find something in response, but might not have to really push it too bad. They're on match point here. If they drop yeah. around, it's not too bad. It might be uh, well off to just save the Vandal and play for next round. Make yeah. sure that everyone has the opportunity to buy and has something to work with in the next coming rounds here. Might try to do something instead, trying to close it out. Mm. We've seen them do it before, but will they be able to do it here? It's going to be a tough ask for Cerezier. The tap on the spike. <sighs> Get the shots not quite gonna hit their mark. And as you said, it's okay for Shenandoah. You're on match point. You have at least three rounds of buy time for you to work with before you're pushed to that overtime. So as long as you don't lose in those next three, you're okay. And that's why Shenandoah, they're gonna go for the eco. They wanna put all of their eggs into the basket of round number 23 in a match. So GVSU, that was also a big win for them. Because yep. guess what? That saved their economy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the economy is going to be almost even after this round, almost. And is that like, that's like a, a little fighting game, right? Knockout, I believe knockout. it was called there at the so top. So creative. Yeah, I like a knockout fighting, just trying to knock people out. <laughs> you, you love to see it. Slim able to pick up two kills early yeah. on. Sadie as well, ultimately, Sarazay and Sacred have fallen on the side of SU, but that is something that we expected to see uh, in this pistol save round. Yeah, and the fact that Noble even grabs two here is big. All Shenandoah wants to do, you're not expecting to win this round, but the more you take off, I mean, GVSU's economy is not in a good spot at all. So the more you can manage to shave away from them, the better. So you get two of those rifles off the board, you're gonna force an extra round. So Shenandoah, they can come back to this something. full force with three ultimates, almost four at their disposal. This is the round now that you're expecting to win. Yeah, the save coming through was for this round specifically, right? Both sides will have full by phantoms and vandals in the hands of all 10 players in this round. And now this is this is exactly what you said. This is what you want to yep. see here from SU. This is the round that you saved for last time. You're looking to win and close it out right now. It's the time to shine for the Shenandoah Hornets. They've been brought out to a map three. It's been a difficult struggle to fight their way on back. Now match point of themselves. All of the tools in the toolbox. What can they manage to build will be something glorious. That's the hope at least. If you're a Hornets Smoke's fan down. like we certainly are. Noble though. A couple smokes laid down. Spotting two down mid. Immediate back off. More towards this Lamps area. He's been there all game along. GVSU have come to expect it as of now. And you're going to start to see both the Gecko and Viper moving away from A showers. Instead pushing towards B. Yet Shenandoah have already begun to rotate of their own. Yeah, Sacred and, and Ultrally possibly able to hold uh -oh. this flank here on B long. This could be huge if they are able to pick yeah. up some kills here. Just keep holding the angle. The ping will come through. One ultra lead okay. finds. Sid will be able to answer in response. Sacred still Viper? alive. 35 HP to their name. Needs to try to find this flank kill. That Behind would you. be huge. The ultimate still available, however, as well. Not able to find that kill on B long. Sacred now opting to push up, trying to find this kill Ooh. onto the brimstone. Will be able to find it. Cerezier will fall Black in response. Sid and Toria oh. will be able to Spike find Find the kills now it's all up to Clabiella. 1v3 spike down on B. 1v3, both Strat Thrash and Viper's Pit. Well, it's not a GVSU, but you know that they are not going to use it unless it is absolutely necessary to do so. Viper's Pit, as a matter of fact, out of the picture. Only Thrash to do scouting, but you have no idea where the player is. Be dizzy, thrown up and over. Well, that's not going to find its mark. The bullets to Clabiella's head, sure. Will this game inching closer and closer? The round Shenandoah put all of their eggs in four, has now blown up in their faces and now are standing on their last limbs of low econ. 
Yeah, 12-11 now, still match point in favor of SU, but like you said, that last round is the one that they had to win because now we see these soft buys here. We have light shields uh, across the board almost on the side of SU, a Bulldog, a few Vandals and Phantoms, however, still in the pocket. They have the rifles, but possibly not the health to win out on these trades. If they can find the heads with their crossbars, they will be able to win these gunfights. But again, GVSU feeling the momentum, going back towards this A site yet again. There's a thrash out from Toria. Just gonna scout, you pick it back up, and you're ready to run it back again. And Ultimate, quite overpowered in this scenario. I mean, it doesn't even take much. Toria's trying to inch her way as close as possible, and... Ugh, I mean, the fact that you can just pull that right back out is essentially an ace the GVSU are keeping in their pocket. You know where Noble's gonna be, there's no question on that fact, but the rest of the Hornets, you. that's rather a mystery. Cerezier, option to go back. Towards Lamps, grouping up with Noble. Now that Thrash, unlikely to be received again. Plant shall make its mark. We get the strike in from above, and Noble's gonna manage to get Sadie. Well, it's Blake, yes, it still did go down. Jennifer Oda, they are up in a 5v3. They are in positions. This is gonna be their time to strike, especially through a Viper's Pit. Information is so incredibly important, but two are gonna go down to the hands of Slim. Fighting inside their ultimate, they're rather unstoppable. It's a third down for the Viper. It has to be sacred to come up big. Yes, it's gonna shut it down. Ultra Lee, it's a 2v1. They know that they're in showers. The defuse has to go through. Sacred and has to win it to find it off, but they're gonna manage to hit the elimination. Ilya Shenandoah Hornets to close it out. 13-11 in a round three. Uh, everything was used in that final round. Their ultimates across the board thrown left and right. Oh. But that low econ, the gunfights, the positioning from SU outshine GVSU in that final round. Able to pick up those kills. Viper trying to do everything they wow. can. Slim almost able to clutch that one up, but just unable to do so. Sacred able to find that kill. SU securing map three and the victory. Give me a heart attack. That's what they're doing. <laughs> Ooh, that was close. I mean, that Viper's Pit like, yeah. was almost a death sentence for mm -hmm. them. I mean, if those blinds from Sacred End were on point, yeah. this is why he wants to play Reyna. Put the guy on Reyna. I mean, unfortunately, probably won't be seeing him in Valorant right. anymore. Right. Hopefully, we'll get we'll get Ryuk back in the mix mm -hmm. for the final game of the NACE Star League season. I mean, this is going to put Shenandoah at a 4-1 record, yeah. which is incredible, considering where this team started with a lot of rough mm -hmm. barriers. The improvements that they've made both individually and as a squad to get them to this point. And, I mean, I won't be shocked if they locked in a second or potentially even first seed with that win. Yeah, the 4-1 and one advancement, right, is a huge thing. And you still have that game later on this week for a potential 5-1 finish yeah. uh, on the season, which would be tremendous Absolutely. to see from the squad. Absolutely. And today, also with the sub, Sacred End playing so, so well. Very familiar with Valorant and the FPSs yeah. as a whole. So not surprised that he was able to perform, but... Very surprised that he was able to perform this this well, right? <laughs> he was insane tonight, uh, as well as the entire squad. Definitely able to step it up a notch here and secure uh, this win for SU. And everything just fell into place. I mean, there was a, there was a highlight moment from every single player yeah. on the team at some point today, and it's going to make for an incredible reel as we go back in later. And you know. When we, when we look back at these maps, we could do a series, like the overview as a whole, like when we started on this, you're on Lotus, you're mm -hmm. arguably best map, even if they're starting to hate it, just because of how much they've had to scrim <laughs> it. I mean, can you really hate it? If it's the yeah. best performance that you could have had for a game one. I mean, you had this defensive locked down. You never made these large blaring errors on any sort of point. Like, yes, maybe it was a small, like, hey, maybe we shouldn't have peaked that, or oh, you should have waited uh, for reinforcement enforcements to come in. That wasn't the case, right? Now, as we move to Ascent, that's where things started to get a little bit tricky. Yep. You go on a huge run, you win five rounds in a row, but after that timeout, the Lakers found their rhythm mm -hmm. and kind of put out the fire. Yeah, and, and with dropping that map too, yeah. it was nice to see SU be able to come back as strong as they did exactly. in map number three, right? That attacking side, while it did end in the same scoreline that it did on Ascent, seven to five in favor of SU there, they hunkered down. They played very, very strong defense. While it got mm -hmm. a little bit shaky towards the end there, they were able to stay calm, cool, collected, yeah. be able to win those gunfights and close this one out. A great thing to see from this squad. Absolutely. Because we know a game like Valorant, 
it can be a little taxing on the mental, right? If you lose a lot of gunfights in a row, if you go on a slide for a few rounds, and when you're low on that econ, it can get to you a little bit. But they did very, very good keeping it calm, keeping it cool, keeping it collected, and being able to bounce back and really close this one out in a commanding fashion in that final round. Yeah. And you know what it takes to have a comeback of that magnitude? A strong leader in the comms, yeah. in the backgrounds, a great IGL. And we actually are going to have the pleasure from hearing from her herself. Clabiella will be joining us for an interview after a short break. So don't go anywhere. We got a guest coming to the disc. Welcome back, everybody. After Valorant was able to secure a 2-1 victory here uh, for the Valorant squad, I'm joined by Klabi Ella, the captain of the team. Walk us through what happened uh, during this series and how you're feeling right now. Um, a lot of us were tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's three hours of Valorant straight, so yeah. like straight up, we were just like, uh. <laughs> but um, I mean, we're really ecstatic because like, um, I mean, this kind of determines our playoff seating or if right. we even make playoffs. Mm -hmm. So if we win the next match, honestly, it's a guaranteed playoff. That's huge. Um, if we don't, I think we're still okay as long as we don't lose like hard because I think right. maps really make the difference. Because mm -hmm. for any CC, like, we ended up losing by like not making playoffs by yeah. literally a map. So it's wow. just tough. Yep. So we're hoping that that doesn't end up being like the same problem. Right. Right, well, you're four and one right now, looking to go five and one. But today, you're playing with a sub. What was it like playing with Sacred End and missing out on Ryuk, a huge playmaker that you have on the squad? I mean, love Ryuk, love Carter. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's the best. Trust me. Like, I literally tell him go kill, and he's like, okay, and he just <laughs> runs it down and kills like three every time. Honestly, like. I told Ethan the same thing. I mean, he did it. Yeah. <laughs> like, straight up. Yeah. He said, Ethan, go kill. And he's like, okay. And then he ran down and just killed three every time. I mean, it was pretty cool. Um, we've never really played with Ethan before. We haven't mm -hmm. even practiced with Ethan ever. So it, it yeah. was interesting because he doesn't know our strats. He doesn't know, like, what mm -hmm. we do every time. Um, but he caught on really quick, which was really good. And we were able to just accomplish everything that we do normally. Um, I mean, we miss Ryuk, of course. It's his right. birthday. So that's hey, why he's not here. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Yeah. Um, so I'm just hoping he's having a great time celebrating with his family. Um, and I just hope that he had a great time anyway, and that, you know, I mean, hey, we missed you, but we got a dub, you know? <laughs> yeah, du a dub's a dub, right? Now, walk us through map number two, right? You were, were ahead uh, towards the end of that map, but then GVS, you were able to storm back and take Ascent away from you guys. Uh, what was the mindset losing that map and going into game three, uh, trying to keep it positive and keep the momentum back in your favor? Honestly, that's 
something that's really good about this team is that Armento never ever actually gets ruined, like whatsoever. So like even if it's a close game, like I mean we've went to map three before and went 13-11 like consistently throughout ECC. And like even if it's like a little bit rough because you're like, wow, we just played three hours of Valorant and we lost. Mm -hmm. Like man, oh darn. But like <laughs> at the same time, like this team's mental is so good and we're just able to keep it up. And it doesn't really matter if we lose because we're like, okay, just lock in and we'll win the next map. Right. We're just confident, which is, I love that a lot, and I love that a lot about this team, is that, like, nothing really ever really brings us down unless we're just tired. Right. <laughs> so. And towards the end of map three, right, it was very close towards the end there, almost an overtime situation there. You were playing with low econ in that final round, a lot of ultimates being expended. What were the comms and the everything going into that final round like? Was it clustered or was everything really calm, cool, collected? It, it was clustered. Yeah. <laughs> it was like honestly straight panic because we heard the gecko flash and the gecko. We're like, oh, we're like, oh no, like where is it coming from? We start like spinning in a circle, Loki, and we're like, right. yo, where is this coming from? And it came from like showers or something. We're like, whoa, like they're here. Yep. Um, it was a little clustered, but I mean, hey, it's like intense last round. We want to make sure we can secure the win mm -hmm. and like. Again, we just want to go home because <laughs> we were tired. So, <laughs> I mean, like, three hours of Valorant, we'll do that to you. So. Yeah, yep. Well, congratulations on the win. Is there anything else you would like to say? Um, I'm really gra glad that this team's doing really well. Um, even if our NECC season was really rough, I mean, we did really well. And I'm very proud of them. We came from literal level zero, starting yep. from the bottom, and now we're playing at Diamond Elo. And, I mean, we're doing really good. And honestly, yeah. like, I'm so proud of them, and I'm glad that we can make playoffs probably this season, so I'm excited. Yeah, that's very exciting. Thank you so much. Congratulations on the win, and thank you very much for staying tuned, sticking with us through some long Valorant gameplay. We have some more streams coming up later in the week, so make sure to keep an eye on notifications from the SU uh, Twitch channel, and we will see you next time.